Welcome to Five Star Race Car Bodies. For over 25 years, Five Star has been the leader in delivering innovative high quality race car bodies and components. Our 120,000 square foot design, manufacturing and warehouse facility is located in Twin Lakes, Wisconsin, where we maintain a huge parts inventory for immediate shipment. Our goal is to consistently offer uncompromising quality and service to both new and existing five-star customers. We trust you'll find this video an invaluable tool in achieving the ultimate appearance and template fit of your five-star body. We thank you for choosing five-star race car bodies and look forward to serving your needs. Five Star Race Car Bodies is proud to present our complete guide to ABC body mounting. To pass tech inspection under the ABC rules, ABC approved bodies must fit templates and a specific set of dimensions. Five Star is committed to providing our customers the highest quality ABC approved bodies and the largest selection of body and mounting accessories available. This detailed video will take you through the complete step by step mounting process and demonstrate why 5-star ABC bodies are the easiest bodies you will ever install. Package C Body Components and Options For this demonstration, we'll be using a complete Package C body kit with the following components. Starting at the front, the nose is a two-piece plastic design, available in black or white and is UPS shippable. The hood, shown here, is the lightweight version, which is up to 47% lighter than the standard fiberglass hood, which is also available. The front fenders are available in fiberglass or plastic. We're showing the fiberglass fender here, which is about the same weight as the plastic version. The plastic fenders are made from the same durable plastic as is used for the nose and bumper cover and are available in black or white. Next is the optional two-piece fiberglass cowl, along with the molded cut-to-fit optional molded polycarbonate windshield that's designed for use with the cowl. The windshield is also available in an oversized version for use without the cowl panel. All windshields are 1 8 inch polycarbonate with permanent anti-fog properties. The roof panel shown here is the optional lightweight version and is also available in standard fiberglass. The lightweight roof weighs about half as much as the fiberglass version. The doors and rocker panels are formed from pre-painted aluminum. The quarter panels are standard fiberglass and are shown with the cut to fit molded and beveled quarter windows in place. The quarter windows are also available in a flat cut to fit version. The rear window is 93 thousandths molded polycarbonate as are the quarter windows and is available in cut to fit and oversized versions. The deck lid filler is made of fiberglass and the deck lid panel is pre-painted aluminum. The two-piece rear cover uses the same durable plastic material as the nose piece and is available in black or white. Lastly, we have the two-piece rear spoiler featuring an aluminum base with a polycarbonate blade. The spoilers are 60 inches wide and the blades are available in 5 inch and 6 and a half tall versions with angles of 55, 70, and 90 degrees. Five Star offers a comprehensive line of innovative high quality accessories to aid in the body installation beginning with the wood template set, ABC centerline, side to side, left fender and right fender shown, aluminum template set, ABC centerline, side to side, left fender and right fender shown formed rear bumper, rear bumper installation kit, deck lid slider kit, deck lid bracket, deck lid hold down kit, formed front bumper, available in 65 or 95 thousandths thickness, formed front bumper with 12 inch wraparound on right side in 95 thousandths thickness, front bumper installation kit, hood pin bracket, 3 8 inch hood pin kit with insert bushings, half inch hood pin kit, universal hinge kit, hood prop, fender braces left and right hand, stainless steel nose screens, windshield cowl dash panel, includes air deflector, adjustable door support, body installation tubing kit, Polycarbonate body braces. 
tappable aluminum hex tubing for universal body brace kit. Threaded end assemblies for universal body brace kit, two left and two right per kit. Adjustable body brace, two per kit. Left and right hand taps, extra long style. Window installation kit. Countersink bit. Windshield brace kit. Rear window brace kit. Door vent windows. Bump and run duct. Available in five sizes to fit most popular radiators. Molded plastic brake duct kit. Standard temp brake cooling hose. Three inch or four inch. High temp brake cooling hose. Three inch or four inch. Spindle mounted brake ducts, left and right. Brake cooling hose connector. Cowl induction cold air system, four barrel design. Available in 14 inch and 16 inch diameter. Also available in a two barrel design, 14 inch only. K and N air filter element in 14 or 16 inch diameter and assorted heights. K and N air filter cleaner. Curved wide angle mirror. Flat wide angle mirror. Drill bit kit. Clico pliers. 8th inch Clicos. 3 16 inch Clicos. 8th inch small head multi grip rivets. 8th inch large head multi grip rivets. 3 16 inch small head multi grip rivets in white, unpainted, or black. 3 16 inch large head multi grip rivets in white, unpainted, or black. 3 16 inch small head multi grip long shank rivet. 3 16 inch peel style rivets and aluminum backup washers in 1 8 and 3 16 inch sizes. Five Star recommends the following tools to complete the body installation as demonstrated. You'll need hammers, safety glasses and a dust mask, sheet metal snips, left and right hand, a drill and drill bits, 1 8 and 3 16 inch sizes, vice grip clamps, assorted swivel pad clamps, as well as duckbill clamps, a saber saw, belt sander, air body saw, angle finder, and sanding block, four foot level, torpedo level, four and six foot straight edges, framing square, combination square, tape measure, string, and plumb bobs, pencils, sharpies, and quality masking tape in assorted sizes, riveters, hand and pneumatic, Clico pliers and Clicos, approximately 51 8 inch and 103 16 inch. Sure form shaver, assorted files, and a hacksaw. Before starting the body installation, there are a few very important steps you must take. First, find the most level area of your floor, which for many of you will be the area where you scale your car. This will help ensure the correct dimensions for tech inspection. Your chassis manufacturer can provide the recommended specifications for ride height, caster camber settings, and rear end location left to right, as well as how to square it. Take care to set these specs the way they'll be when you race. ABC rules recommend that all body dimensions, template inspecting and measuring, be done with the driver out of the car. Be sure the chassis manufacturer knows this when providing the specs for your chassis. Cut ride height blocks and place them under the chassis as instructed by the chassis manufacturer. Back off or disconnect the coilovers. Set toe to zero and make sure the wheels are pointing straight ahead. At this time we're going to show you how to locate the center line string through the car. To begin, we'll measure the center of the tire. We'll mark that. Then we'll measure over into, toward the center of the car, half the distance of the tread width, and mark the string that we've located from left to right. At this time, to help locate the center, when we get to the front of the car, we'll have to take a measurement using a level. We'll measure from the mark that we put at half the distance from the, of the tread width in the rear. We'll measure out to the sidewall of the tire with the bubble level 
and will have a dimension. In this particular car is 38 and 5 eighths. Now we'll go to the front of the car and, and using that number of 38 and 5 eighths, we'll take into account the camber in the right front wheel. So again, we'll put the level against the bottom of the tire and we'll measure in 38 and 5 eighths. Bubble in the center of the level. And my mark at 38 and 5 eighths. And then we'll make a mark on the chassis. Now we should be able to go ahead and put our string through the center of the car using those two marks that we just established. Now that we've established the center line through the chassis and tied the string off, the next thing we want to do is clamp the body insulation jig kit onto the chassis as recommended on the instruction sheet. On the rear one here, we're going to preset this at 34 and a quarter just for a beginning point. Moving forward on the car, we're going to put the four roof height jigs on the roll cage and just snug them up at, at, for right now until we get the roof on there and determine what the proper height will have to be on those. And then the last one will be the one that goes across at the back of the fender and we'll preset that one at 32 and a quarter for a beginning point. One thing we'd like to do before we move on to the installation of the body itself, before anything gets in the way back here, is install the nuts for the rear, slide, rear deck slider kit. What we're going to do is we're going to measure down approximately an inch and a quarter and we'll drill a 5 8 inch hole and we'll, in that hole we'll put the flange nut in, put it in so the, the flange is flush. After the nut's welded in for the rear slider kit, go ahead and put the bolt in and center the slot on these pieces. Go ahead and do that on both sides and then we'll be prepared to go ahead when we get to the step of um, putting the mounts in here. The next step we're going to take is the assembly of the nose. That's something that has to be done in preparation for mounting the body on the car. When, this part, when you receive this part, you'll see that there's some overages and some places that have to be trimmed out. On the top, we have to trim this down to one inch as indicated by the, the mark here. That'll be for lining up with the hood pin bracket. We also have to notch out a half inch here for the hood pin bracket on this flange, as well as cut out where the dimples indicate for the form steel bumper. And the last thing we'll have to trim out, as indicated by the black mark, is this area here for the air intake. Once we've done that, the next step will be to take these halves that have been trimmed out as indicated and clamp them together. It's usually good to have someone help you do this so you can get the surface, the mating surface, lined up properly. So we'll line up the front, and as you can see here, we made a pencil mark in a couple of the corners just to help us visually line these up as the corner is not real sharp in the plastic. So we'll get this clamp on here, line up the line, and make sure that the mating surface is flush, and we'll clamp it. Moving along, we'll continue that process of clamping the flange together, making sure that the mating surface on the outside of the part is flush. We'll have to put several clamps along here to clamp this before to prepare it for drilling and riveting. All along we we'll want to make sure that the mating surface on the outside is flush. Now that we've clamped this together and we know that we have it lined up where we want it lined up, flush on the surface, now we can flip this nose over and we can drill the, the flange together to prepare it for riveting. We like to use 3 16 rivets on this. So we'll go ahead and we'll drill a couple of, we'll drill our holes along the mating flange. For riveting this flange together on the plastic parts, we prefer to use the large head rivets as well as the large backup washer. So we'll go ahead and finish the riveting of this flange. Once we have all the rivets in here, we can remove the clamps and then we're prepared to move on to the next step of the nose preparation which will be installing the hood pin bracket. As you can see on the hood pin bracket, there's a center line mark. That mark should line right up with the seam of the nose. We also want to keep the back side of the hood pin bracket lined up flush with the back of the flange of the nose where we trimmed it down to one inch. At this point, we can go along here and clamp the hood pin bracket in place, again, 
keeping the back of the hood pin bracket flush with where we trimmed the flange down to one inch. Once we clamp across here in several areas and we're confident that we have this lined up, we can go ahead and prepare to drill the, the hood pin bracket to the nose. On the hood pin bracket, we typically use an eighth inch drill bit, because eighth inch bits will be enough. We'll continue that process across the entire top of the nose into the hood pin bracket. Now that we've completed the drilling and clicking of the, the hood pin bracket, the last step we have to do in the preparation of the nose is install the form steel bumper. On all of our form steel bumpers, we put the, the labeling to the right side of the car and that'll carry on throughout any of our, our models. First thing we'll do in locating the steel bumper in, in the nose is we'll find the center line, the center of the bend on the center bend and line it up with the flange. Then we'll go out to where we're going to make contact on the end with our bend. We'll make a mark at the top and bottom of the bumper. Then we'll make also a mark lined up with the center line of the bend. Then we'll move to the other end and we'll repeat that process on the top and bottom of the steel bumper and at the mark at the center of the bend. Then we'll move the steel bumper out of the way, transfer this line that we made at the center of the bend to the center distance between the marks on both ends. And then we can drill our 3 16 holes on both ends that we'll use to attach the bumper. Now we'll put the steel bumper back in here. Again, getting it centered. Find our mark. We'll take a pencil. And coming through from the outside, we'll make a mark on the steel bumper. Once we have the first end marked, we'll take the steel bumper out. We'll locate the mark that we made with the pencil and drill a 3 16 hole. Then we'll take the bumper, put it back in the plastic nose, and put the Cleco through the plastic, and we'll find the hole into the steel bumper and release the Cleco. We'll go to the other end, put the Cleco installed in the first end, put the steel bumper down, pull it tight to the plastic, and again make a mark where we're going to drill our hole. And we'll remove the Cleco, take the bumper out, find our pencil mark, and drill the hole. And we can take the steel bumper and put it back into the plastic nose. And put a Cleco in both ends. We now have the nose ready with the hood pin bracket installed and the steel bumper installed and all the cutouts made. The nose is now ready to put on the side until we're ready to install it on the car. Then we'll move on to doing the same process with the bumper cover, assembling the halves and preparing it to install on the car. The next step will be the pre-assembly of the, the bumper cover. Again, as with the nose, there's some areas that need to be trimmed. On the top, we'll want to cut this, trim this to three quarters of an inch along the top to accept the deck lid bracket. We have to go along here, angle out, and then go just slightly beyond the raised area to leave room for the quarter panel to fit in here on the end. The other area we'll have to trim out again is for the form steel bumper. Once we have those trimmed out, with the top cut down to three quarters of an inch, notched out on the end for the deck lid bracket, and notched out for the steel bumper, we can take the two halves and clamp them together. Again, we've made a pencil line in the recess to help us with the lining up of the two halves. Again, we'll have the surface flush and we'll clamp it together. We'll move along down the entire surface, keeping the surface mating surface flush and clamp it all the way along. Once we have the inside all clamped together and then we know the outside is flush, then we'll go ahead and lay this thing down and drill it for riveting. We like to use again the 3 16 rivets with the large heads. Once 
Once we have all the holes drilled, we'll go ahead again with our large head rivets and the large backup washers. Once we've completed riveting along this flange, we can remove the clamps that we had in place to hold it together. And then we can move on to the next step, which will be installing the deck lid bracket. The deck lid bracket, as, as was the case with the hood pin bracket, has a center line mark on it. So you should be able to put that underneath this flange that we've cut down to three quarters of an inch with the mark of the center line right on this, lined up with the flange where the two halves go together. Then we can clamp this together, clamp this bracket in, and as is the case with the hood pin bracket, keep the front of the deck lid bracket flush with where we trimmed off this recess. Once we're satisfied that we have this lined up and we have the center line on, we can go ahead and we can begin to drill this. Typically we like to use eighth inch rivets in this process. We'll drill along the entire flange area to attach the deck lid bracket to the plastic bumper cover. Now that we've installed this deck lid bracket with the Clecos, we can go ahead and remove our clamps. And then we can move on to the last step of preparing the bumper cover, which will be installing the, the form steel bumper. We'll lay our bumper cover down. We'll bring in our form steel bumper. Again, with the markings will be on the right side of the car to stay consistent. We'll follow basically the same procedure that we did on the nose when we were installing the bumper. We'll find the center of the center bend and line it up with our flange. We'll come over here where we're going to make contact with the bend and we'll make a mark at the top and the bottom as well as locating the center of the bend and making a mark. We'll carry on, do those same steps on the other side and we'll get that steel bumper out of our way and we'll transfer this mark down on both sides. Then we'll drill a hole centered between the two marks we made at the top and the bottom of the bumper. Get it lined up back on our center and we'll spin one end out over the table. Again with the pencil, we're going to make a mark through the hole that we drilled onto the steel bumper, remove it, locate our mark and drill the hole. Now we'll stick a Clico through the hole. Line it up with the bumper. We've got one end clico in place. Now we'll We'll go to the other end, again marking through the hole we drilled through the plastic onto the steel formed bumper, and again we'll drill a hole. We have the deck lid bracket and the steel bumper in place. We're done with the pre-assembly of the bumper cover. To prepare the roof for installation onto the chassis, there are a couple things that we have to do. One of them will be locate the center line of the, the roof. So we'll go to the back of the roof and we'll measure on the raised area of the roof between the ledges and we'll see that this number is 40 and 7 eighths. So to find the center of that we'll go to 20 and 7 sixteenths and make a mark. Then we'll move forward to the front of the roof and we'll use the body line in the roof to measure and find the center. We look and we see that it's 41 inches across, so we'll go to 20 and a half. Again, we'll make a small mark here. Now we need to transfer these marks out to the ledges so we can make the proper measurements when hanging the roof on the, on the chassis. We'll line the straight edge up with the marks that we made on the front and rear of the roof. And at that point, we'll transfer the line out onto the window ledge. We'll do the same thing at the rear 
and then we can get the straight edge out of our way. We know that this roof is mounted two and a half inches left of the center line of the chassis. So at this time, we'll take and we'll, we'll measure over two and a half inches to the right side of the center line that we located, and we'll make a mark. This is where we're going to hang the plumb bob down to the center line string on the chassis. The reason that we do this is it's easier to do this and have the plumb bob hang down directly above the center line string rather than measuring from the plumb bob two and a half inches over to the center line. The final steps in preparing the roof to go on the car will be to take the straight edge here because there's some excess material that has to be removed. We'll make a line here following the raised area both ways in the back corners moving forward at the where the front of the quarter panel will be on we'll move approximately an eighth of an inch and then we'll go up to the front the pads on the A pillar as you can see I've indicated the corner of the the flange we're going to come up approximately a quarter inch on the window ledge and we'll angle this flat pad where the fender will go as illustrated. Once we've marked that out on both sides, we'll take our air body saw and we'll remove that excess material to prepare the roof to go onto the car. Once we've repeated this process on both sides, on both A-pillars and at the rear of the roof, we'll be ready to install the roof onto the chassis. The next step that we're going to do before we can start assembly of the car is to prepare the quarter panel. As you'll notice, on the back of the quarter panel, there's a scribe line, as well as at the top of the quarter panel, which I've highlighted here where it meets the roof and the area where we have to cut out for the side window panel. By putting these scribe lines on here and having you cut to them and sand it, it will assure a quality fit of the parts. Before I start cutting the parts though, I want to put on a, a dust mask so I don't have to breathe all these fiberglass particles that will be flying in the air when I'm cutting. Now to prepare to, to cut along the line on the window area, I'm going to drill a couple holes in the corners so we can start the saw easier. The unibit works real nice for this purpose as it drills through the fiberglass without grabbing. Then I'll go ahead and use the holes as a starting point to start the saw out. Now that I've finished trimming them with the saw along all these edges where we had scribe lines, I'm going to take my sanding block and I'm just going to finish sanding the edge to meet the scribe line because it's kind of hard to hold the saw in a perfectly right on the line all the way along. So we'll go along all these surfaces and we'll sand them as smooth as we can to the scribe line at which point we know that we may have a slight adjustment to make up here on the front when we put it on the car. But when we sand all these edges all the way around, we should be ready to install this quarter panel onto the car. Now we're ready to begin installing the body on the chassis. The first step that we took is we put the roof up here on top of the body installation jigs. And we also put the plumb bob on the offset center line, the two and a half inches over as we talked about when we were preparing the roof. Also going to the back of the roof, we did the same thing, two and a half inches off the center line on the mark that we made previously. And we have both plumb bobs hanging down approximately on the center line going through the chassis. The next thing that we'll have to do is put the quarter panel on. I'm gonna put the right quarter panel up here in the recess that's provided on the roof for the quarter panel and we'll clamp it in place, both front and rear. On the rear, we want to check the alignment and make sure that it lines up with the recess for the rear window, the top of the quarter, as well as on the roof. 
If the window ledge does not line up on the roof and quarter panel, it may be necessary to remove a small amount of material from the front edge of the quarter panel where it meets the roof. Now that we've got both quarter panels clamped to the roof, we're going to put a 7 inch block under the leg of the quarter panel at the front on both sides. Now we'll install the deck lid filler panel. To line this up, we'll do as we did previously, making sure that the ledge for the rear window lines up as we've marked and highlighted here. Now that we have the deck lid filler panel in place, lined up for the window recess, as well as flush with the quarter panel to the top of the filler panel, the next step we'll take is we'll put the bumper cover into the quarter panels. As you can see, the quarter panel lays into the bumper cover, the recess on the bumper cover all along. Now that we have the bumper cover clamped in place on the quarter panels, we'll take a little bit of the weight that's hanging on the bumper cover off, off of here with the, by placing a jack underneath here. After we have the back of the car clamped together, before we go any further, we want to center the wheel holes on the tires. The easiest way to do that is looking through the car from the opposite side. We can see that we have an equal amount of spacing on the front and rear of the tire. We've done the same on the other side. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is set the roof heights. Before we set the roof heights though, one thing we do want to check is make sure that our plumb bobs are hanging down on our center line string. We can see here in the rear that we're good. We'll go ahead to the front of the car and we'll check the center line string and we can see that the plumb bob is hanging down right above the center line string. Once we've established that the plumb bobs on the roof are on the center line string, we know that we're ready to go ahead and set our heights of our four corners of our roof. We know by looking in our catalog at the guideline dimension chart that there's a, a roof diagram that has the four corners of the roof and there'll be 44 inches on this model. On the front we want to go on the raised area right next to the body line with the level. We'll put the level on 44 inches on the ruler and we'll adjust the roof until we make the, the bubble in the level level. We'll repeat that on the other side without moving the ruler. By going to the same spot on the floor, we'll make up for any imperfections in the floor and we'll know that both sides are at the same height. Again, repeating this process on this side, we go to 44 inches on the ruler, the level is level, and we can make any adjustment we need to make on this side. Once we've established this height, this is the same at 44 inches on both sides on the raised area in the front, we'll repeat that process in the rear uh, the intersection in the rear will be where the quarter panel meets the roof. It's 44 inches on both sides and again we'll hold the ruler in one spot in the center to make up for any imperfections in the floor. When we go to the back of the car and we measure the two corners here and get them at 44 inches, if we've made any major adjustments to our roof body jig, we know that we're going to have to go back in, in to the front and remeasure and make sure that the heights stay correct. After we've established that all four corners are at 44 inches, as mentioned on the guideline dimension chart, we want to double check just to make sure that everything is correct by measuring back 10 inches from the windshield ledge on the original center line of the roof. And at that point, the roof should measure 47 inches tall. One thing we want to do before we build any permanent mounts to the bumper or to the roof is check the rear overhang. The rear overhang is one of the critical dimensions of the ABC body program. We're going to show you a quick and easy way to check it so you understand how to do it without the need of a referee to do so. The first thing I'll do is I'll take my framing square here and I'm going to find the center of the rear hub. By measuring from the back of the rim shell to the square and then doing the same thing from the front side of the rim shell and getting the same dimension both front and rear, I know that I've established the center line of the rear axle. I'll make a mark here on the tape at that point. We'll go do the same thing on the other side. Once we've completed that step, We'll measure back 57 inches from the line we made here at the center line of the rear axle and we'll make a mark to the rear of the car. Again, we'll repeat that process on the other side of the car. Once we've done that, we'll have a line on both sides. We'll put a piece of tape at the center line of the rear bumper cover and we'll make a mark across. Now we have a 57 inch mark right at the center of the rear bumper cover. The next thing we'll do at that point Let's put a level on the 57 inch mark 
get the, the bubble in the center and measure forward to the bumper cover. As you can see, that dimension is 10 inches. When we subtract 10 inches from 57, the number would be 47, which is the official number for the rear overhang. A time-saving tool that we've developed at Five Star is the Five Star Roof Locating Fixture. There's several benefits to using this fixture. It'll save you a lot of time in mounting the body. First thing we have to do is place the fixture over the chassis and then we'll bring the roof in and clamp it in place. Alignment of the roof into the mounting fixture is a very easy process. We simply line up the outside of the pad here on the mounting pad with the body line on the front on both sides and clamp it in place. We follow the same procedure in the rear of the roof by simply lining it up with the recess that's provided for the quarter panel to fit into. By doing this, we've already preset the four corner heights of the roof at the proper height for mounting. The next step will be locating the fixture over the chassis. The first thing that we'll do is, with the adjustment here, we'll bring this thing down until both ends make contact with the outer shell of the rim, and we can tighten this up. Following that, we'll put a level on here, make sure that we're running across level so we're located properly front to rear, and then check also to make sure that our plumb bob is still over the center line of the chassis. Then we can lock this up. And we'll tighten up the, the adjusting arm on the other side the same as we did on this side. And that pretty much wraps up the locating of the roof fixture. Once the five star roof locating fixture is properly located, we can be assured that the four corner heights of the roof are correct and that the rear overhang dimension will be 47 inches. We have eliminated the need to check the rear overhang by measuring it, as well as the constant remeasuring of the roof corner heights while adjusting the roof front to rear and side to side on the body installation jig. The use of the five star roof locating fixture has proven to be a great time saver. The next step we're going to take is mount the top of the quarter panel to the roof panel. I'm going to draw a line here to make some marks. Then we're going to come ahead a minimum of three quarters of an inch from the rear window ledge. So we have room for our side to side template later on. And then we'll just measure this out and space these evenly. We'll go ahead and drill these at this time. After we've drilled those in, we'll remove this clamp and we'll place the last hole down the, on the front of the quarter panel here, but we'll make sure we stay up high enough that we don't miss where we trimmed out below. At that point, we'll move over to the other side and we'll repeat this process. The next step after attaching the top of the quarter panel to the roof will be to attach the back of the quarter panel to the bumper cover. When we make our mark for the first one in, we want to make sure that we feel underneath here so our first hole will catch the pad that's on the top of the deck lid bracket. Mark it in here, and then we'll go ahead and we'll space out our, all of our marks down here. And then we'll go ahead and drill that through the quarter panel into the bumper cover. We'll continue down the side and drill this side in. We'll repeat this process on the other side, and then we'll come back to putting our supports in for the deck lid bracket. The first thing we have to do is center the bumper cover on the center line string on the chassis, left to right. Once we have that lined up, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put a clamp to the body installation jig kit on each quarter panel. Once both sides are clamped, we're going to check our height and adjust them with the body installation kit. We'll tighten this up. 34 and a half is going to be measured right at the back of the quarter panel at the intersection of the bumper cover. We'll do that on both sides. 
Once we've measured both sides and we're confident that there are 34 and a half on both sides, the next thing we're going to do is measure from the top of our slider up to the deck lid bracket and get a rough dimension. We'll add approximately one inch to that length and using the three quarter inch square tubing provided in the body installation tubing kit, we'll take this tube and hold it up here underneath the deck lid bracket and we'll let it run alongside the piece of the slider kit. I'm going to draw a line on here which will give us the proper angle and once we do that we're going to measure up one quarter inch both front and rear and draw a new line to cut on. The reason that we're doing that is so we have enough material when we put the angle on the other end. Once we've cut one end at the angle that we marked we're going to do the same thing put the angled end up against the deck lid bracket and we'll put the other end here and draw a line along the piece of the slider kit. Once we have that mark, we'll take it over and cut it off on the chop saw. And then we're ready to install our piece that has the angle cut on both ends to fit in there. We'll place this piece on top of the piece of the slider kit and underneath the deck lid bracket. At this time, we'll put a torpedo level on the side of this to make sure that we have the piece going fairly straight up and down. Get the level in the center. We're ready to go ahead and tack this piece in. Put a tack on both the top and the bottom. And once we've tacked that in, both top and bottom, we'll repeat this process on the other side. To install the rear bumper installation kit, we're going to take the piece that's comes in the kit. We're going to go down here and we're going to take a rough measurement. We'll get a dimension. Again, we're going to leave it a little bit longer than we need it to be. And we're going to take the stick and go from the notch. And we're going to measure over and make our mark. This time we'll go and cut down, cut this tubing on our chop saw till we have two pieces of that length. The next step is to take the two inch square tubing that's provided in the rear bumper installation kit. And we're going to take it over to the drill press and we're going to drill a 5 16 inch hole through both sides for our mounting bolt. Once we've done that, we're going to take the stick that we rough cut and we're going to put it, place it through here with a deeper notch towards the outside of the car. I'm going to take this down, put it in place with the notch up tight against the rear bumper. I'm going to center the 2 inch square on this piece. I'm going to take a torpedo level to make sure that I hold this level. Once I have that level and I have the two inch square where I want it, I'm going to clamp it so it can't slide in and out. I'm going to take a sharpie and mark so I can trim off the excess behind the two inch square. Once we've done that, we'll take our piece out that's clamped. We'll take it to the drill press and we'll drill our 5 16 hole all the way through. And then we'll take this stick out of here and trim off the excess. To continue with the process of mounting the rear bumper, we're going to put the centerline template on the car. And we're going to check and make sure that it fits nice and tight with no gap along the back here. Once we've determined that, we're going to get the template out of our way. And we're going to double check that height with the ABC dimension of 34 and 7 eighths. Once we know that's at 34 and 7 eighths, now we want to take into account for any sag because there's a little bit of give in the inch and three quarter round into the two inch square. So what we're going to do is we're going to raise this area where the spoiler mounts up one quarter of an inch. Once we've done that, we're ready to go ahead and put the stick in to the rear bumper. We'll bring this in here, make sure we've got our notch nice and tight. Then we'll take our level Make sure we have the bubble in the center. Then we're going to go ahead and tack this in place. Once we know we've got that secured in there, we'll go to the other side and repeat that process. The next thing we want to do is make a, a brace for underneath the deck lid filler panel. 
The first step in doing that is we want to take the adjustable piece of our body installation jig kit and we want to bring this up so it fits nice and tight to the template. Once we see that we have a nice tight fit there, we'll get the template out of the way and we'll grab a piece of the half inch square tubing from the body installation tubing kit. We've already cut this piece off so it'll fit in between the flanges on the deck lid, but as you can see it rocks on there because this piece is flat and the filler panel has some crown in it. So we'll have to go put, a, put some arch into this piece. So to do that we'll go over to the vise and put some bend in it. And the vise will just move along and just put just a little bit of pressure on here just to create a nice steady constant arch. Once we've got the arch in here, we're going to lay it on the back on the, on the filter panel. We see that it fits the crown nice and tight. One step that we'll want to take is we'll want to check and make sure that we don't have any flat spots in this. So we're going to go over to the table and just draw a line and flip it over and check it. Once we've laid this piece down on the table, I'm going to take and draw a line along this thing. At that point we can pick it up, flip it over, and make sure we don't have any flat spots and that we have a symmetrical, nice symmetrical piece here. Once we know that that's good, we'll go back to the car and we'll install it inside the filler panel. Now that we have this piece bent to fit the contour of the filler panel from side to side, we're going to take it and put it underneath the filler panel and locate it just ahead of the recess for the deck lid. And then we'll clamp it in place. We want to make sure that we have it fairly the same distance from the back flange here. We'll measure both sides to assure that we have the same distance. The next step will be to make a support bar from the, the bar that we just put across at the deck lid filler panel down to the chassis. So we'll measure from here up and we'll get a measurement. Then using tubing from the body insulation tubing kit, the half inch square, we'll cut some pieces with just a little bit of angle on the bottom edge. We'll go ahead and put that in place and then we'll use the torpedo level to be sure that we have it nice and straight up and down. Once we have the support in place and we're happy with it level up and down, we'll go ahead and tack it in. Once we have that support in place, we'll do the same process on the other side and then to complete this installation of this support, we'll check it with our template again to make sure we have a nice tight fit on the deck lid filler panel. Now that we have the upright on the other side, as we mentioned earlier, I just wanted to bring up the point that there is an optional way to put the supports on to the deck lid filler panel support, and that is with the universal bracing kit. And to do that, we would cut this to length which will, and tap it, which will demonstrate when we work on the roof supports. And you would mount it to the chassis with the stainless steel clamp, and to mount it onto the half inch tube that we've put underneath here, you take this bracket that's supplied, spread it apart, put it in place where you want it to be, drill and rivet it, and then squeeze it back together so it looks like it did originally. And later on we can put that back into place and put the bolt in it and it will support the rear. Next thing we want to do is do a final check on our template fit on the filler panel. We can see that it fits nice and tight. And then the last step in this process will be to drill the, the flange of the quarter panel to the flange of the deck lid on both sides. That's good. Now we're ready to install the right door on the project car. Take it over here and we'll start at the back of the door into the quarter panel. I'm going to fit this corner of the door into the recess provided at the top of the door. We'll clamp that in place making sure that we have a nice tight fit. And I'll go down to the bottom of the quarter panel and I'll adjust the quarter panel leg forward or back, whichever is required to make a nice tight fit along this seam. I'll clamp that in place and then I'll move the 7 inch block underneath the door at the back. Then I'll move around to the front of the door. I'm going to clamp this on the recess on the pad on the A-post. As you can see, we're going to fit it right next to the raised area and we're going to line the front of it up with the front of the pad.
We'll clamp that in place. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll go down and we'll put our seven inch block underneath the front of the door like we did in the rear. The last thing we're gonna do right now on this right door is check the height at the rear of the door. And as you can see, it's at 32 and three quarters, which is the recommended height. Now that we've got the right door in place, we'll go ahead and we'll drill it into the quarter panel and then we'll go over to the left side of the car and repeat this process. Now we're going to check and make sure that we're ready to make our, our roof mounts. What we want to do is, one more time, check and make sure that the plumb bobs are still on the center line going through the car. We also want to make sure that coming around the side of the car we have our 7 inch blocks under both doors, front and rear. And then we're going to check and make sure that our fit on our center line template is correct. What we've done here is we've used some components from the body installation jig kit, moved them over on the center line to make sure that the roof is up tight like it should be, fitting properly front and rear of the roof. And we'll leave those in there during the process of building the roof mounts. Then we'll remove the center line template and bring in the side-to-side -side template, which is required for ABC program. I'm going to place that at the back edge of the roof. The back of the template should be right even with where the top of the windshield will be. And then on the front side, we'll bring in a combination square to make sure that this template is mounted 90 degrees to the surface of the roof, which sets our angle for this template. When we can see that we have a nice fit all across this template, this side-to-side -side template, we're, no, we're ready to move forward and make our roof mounts. Next, we're going to show how to use the uh, half-inch steel tubing that's provided in the body insulation tubing kit to make permanent mounts for the roof. These will be welded to the, the roll cage, and uh, what we've done is we've gone in here and we've measured uh, a length that we want to use, and we've added probably an inch and a half or so to that length. We're going to want to go to this, this cleek over here that, that holds the roof support um, by angling our bracket, our roof brace over to here. We know that we're going to still fit the template like we need to. What we've done here is we've taken and we've flattened one end and drilled an eighth inch hole in it and bent this so we'll fit the contour of the roof. We're going to put that in place. and we're going to mark where we need to cut it to make it fit. Once we've marked that off, we'll take it and cut it. And we'll put the one that's been cut to fit in place. Make sure that everything's still fitting properly. We'll go ahead and tack this in place. We'll follow that same procedure for all four corners of the roof as well as on the center line front and rear to make sure that we fit our templates properly when we get to the tech line. Now we're going to show you the five star preferred way to make the roof mounts. We prefer to use the universal body bracing kit because it'll be adjustable and we'll always be able to make sure that the templates fit properly. One of the kits we'll use here will be the hex tubing which is hollow, so it's ready to accept a quarter inch tap. We'll also use the rod end kit, which each kit comes with two left hand and two right hand ends. And we like to use the taps offered by Five Star, the left hand and right hand. As you'll notice, they have an extra long shank, and we can just go ahead and mark on the shank an inch and a half to inch and three quarters in, so when we go through the tapping of the tube, we know that we got the threads in deep enough. We won't force it in, we'll just go in as deep as it, until it wants to slow down, and then we'll back it out. We'll blow it off with the air blower, and shoot a little more WD-40 on there so it doesn't bind up. We like to use a drill for this process because it speeds the process up a great deal. The key is, the key is not to go in too deep. When it starts to bog down, you want to stop and back it out. Um, it'll require going in and out of the tube several times to get to the, the threads to the depth that you want them. As you can see, we have no problem getting into the tube an inch and a half to inch and three quarters using the taps that are available from Five Star with the extra long shank that they have on them. That way we'll have plenty of room to get the threads on the rod end into the tubing. After we have one end done, we'll go to the other end and use the opposite, whether it be right or left hand, 
and we'll thread the other end and then we're ready to assemble the ends on there and put them into the car. As you can see, we've installed the rod ends into this tube that we previously tapped, as well as the stainless steel clamp through the slotted end on the saddle here to go around the roll cage. The other thing that we did is drill to offset an eighth inch hole because the center hole is a little too large for the eighth inch that's going through the quarter panel. This time we'll install it using that rivet. And we'll put it around the roll cage. We can adjust it so we make contact with the roll cage. And we can go ahead and tighten up the clamp. Once we have the clamp tight around the roll cage, we can adjust up and down on our hex tube here to make sure that we have the proper amount of pressure against there. Then we can remove the clamp on our roof mounting fixture. We can see that it's fitting nice and tight to the flange. If it was low, we could adjust it up or whatever we have to do to make it fit properly. We'll go around the roof and we'll do all four corners as well as the center line front and rear of the roof. The last thing we'll do then is put our templates on to make sure that they still fit properly. And at that time, we'll go ahead and jam up the jam nuts on each of these roof mounts. Once we have all those jam nuts tightened up on all the roof mounts all the way around the car, we're ready to go on to the next process, which will be mounting the front clip of the car. Now we're ready to move to the front of the car and attach the fenders to the nose. First thing we'll do is we'll bring it in and line it up. Line the fender up to the nose. We've got some clamps to clamp on the flange in the back. and We'll make sure that we have a nice flush fit of the fender in the nose. We'll move along and we'll place several clamps on the back side of the nose and the fender and bring the flange together nice and tight. As you can see, our lines in our, in our ledges for the hood line up as we did previously on other assembly parts. And then once we finish clamping all along the back of this flange and we see that we have a nice flush fit here, we'll go ahead and we'll drill and Clico the nose to the fender. Once we have all the Clicos in place, we can remove our clamps. And as you can see, we have this thing fit where it's nice and flush to the nose. For this demonstration, we use the plastic fender, but the same process would be used to mount a fiberglass fender. We'll go to the other side and we'll mount the other, the left fender the same way we just did with the right fender, and then we'll be ready to put the front clip onto the car. If you're not using the five-star roof locating fixture, it's gonna be required that you put some marks on the floor to check for the front overhang dimension as required by the ABC rules. To do that, we're gonna follow the same procedure that we did in the rear of the car. Again, I'll measure from the rim and find the center, getting the same dimension front and rear. Once I do that, I know that I can drop down and make a mark at the bottom at the square. Once that's been completed, we'll measure forward 46 inches, make a mark. We've already done that on the other side, so now we can come across and put a mark across the center where the center of the nose will be. Once we have the marks on the floor that we require, we're ready to put the front clip in place on the car. As you can see, we've put our blocks under the nose to put the proper height for the nose there. And then we'll look through the wheel holes like we did in the rear and try to center the wheel holes front to rear. Once we've done that on both sides, and we're happy with the centering of the wheel holes. We'll come to the front of the car and we'll put our template on the car, which we're gonna line up the bottom with the, the over the car part of the center line template. Line up the bottom and we'll clamp it. And we'll come up here making sure that our template is fit tight, lined up. We'll bring our framing square down and we'll see that we have our front overhang properly adjusted. Once all those dimensions look like they're correct, the next thing that we'll do in this process is we'll build the sticks for the front bumper. If 
you are using the five star roof mounting fixture, it's not necessary to measure on the floor. At this time, once the front clip is up in place and the wheel holes are centered the way that we want them, we'll bring the roof locating fixture forward and use, lock it into the wheels. Once it's locked in place with the wheels, we'll put the crossbar on it. Again, holding our template in place, and we'll check our front overhang, which is indicated on the crossbar. And we'll see that it's at 46 inches as required by the ABC body rule. Once we have our front clip installed, and we've checked our wheel holes as well, along with our front overhang numbers. We want to check and make sure that we have the nose center line on the center line string through the chassis, as well as the coverage of the tires left and right. When we have that where we want it, we're going to build the sticks to the front bumper. First thing you'll see in our front bumper installation kit are these two pieces here. This piece with the long slot and the rounded corners will be made to mount on the front of the frame horn. As you can see, we've got that lined up flush with the outside and we have this piece already on this, installed on this chassis. Then we have a piece with a short, much shorter slot and that's gonna go on the bottom side of the frame horn, again flush with the outside, and it'll be seven inches back from the front of the frame horn to the center of the hole. Once we have those pieces installed, we're gonna take the slotted piece with the square corners along with the short half inch nut and bolt. And we're gonna put them through this slotted piece that's permanently mounted on the chassis. What I'd like to do to start out is be approximately in the center of both slots. Now we'll take a look at the sticks that are going to go out to the front bumper. As you can see in our kit, there's two sticks here, one having a greater angle than the other. The stick with the greater angle goes on the left-hand side. Using the other one, we're going to put it in place, letting it run long to the back. We'll put it up to the bumper in the front and now we'll adjust this slotted piece on the front. We're going to come down to where we're about approximately in the center of the hole. At that point we're going to mark the front of the slot on the tab that's welded on the chassis. We'll cut it on the line and after it's cut to length we'll take this cap and cap the end welding it around three sides. Once that step is completed and we have this welded, we're going to take the inch and a half long slug along with the longer half inch bolt and nut. and We're going to put them in place on the back tab that's mounted on the chassis. We'll just snug that up at this time and we're going to get ready to tack that in place. We're going to take the stick that we've cut the length and capped off Put the notch up onto the bumper in the front, come up underneath the slotted piece and see how we've come up about approximately the center of the slug and the half inch bolt. At this time we'll tack weld this in place starting in the rear then we'll move up to the slotted piece and then onto the front bumper. At this time, we'll just double check and make sure nothing moved before we got this tacked on. And if we're satisfied with that, we'll put a couple more tack welds in place. Then we'll go to the left side of the car and repeat this process. Once we have these tacked in place, we can strip the nose off and go ahead and weld everything up permanently. Bolt it back together, put the nose back on, There is some preparation work that has to be done before we can install a, the cowl piece. First of all, on the window ledge, we're going to take and trim this down to three quarters of an inch wide. The reason we have some overage there is for wear on the molds and so forth, but we want to make sure that this is an exact fit. So we're going to put this three quarter inch tape here and trim on the outside of the line. We'll probably go ahead and do that all the way around at a later time, but for now we'll do this. We'll repeat the same process on the other side. Then on the cowl piece itself, we're going to go down in the recessed area right here and follow that all the way around the front flange. Then, as indicated here with the, the Sharpie, on the black line, 
we're going to trim that corner out and remove that material and we'll do the same thing on the other side to allow room for our fender brace to go through there at a later time. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this out now. I'm going to go ahead and repeat these processes on the other side and then we'll come back to installing the cowl piece. The first step we're going to take in installing the cowl piece will be to locate the recessed area on the cowl piece in the windshield bed area right at the end on each side. At this time we're going to put that behind the ledge that we cut down to three quarters of an inch. Let that overlap into the recessed area. I'll clamp this at this time and then I want to double check to make sure that when we notch this up the quarter of an inch it came out properly. And I want to make sure that the top raised area on the cowl piece as well as the raised area on the A-pillar are in the same plane. As we can see it is with the straight edge. We can then go ahead and drill one eighth inch hole through here at this time. Then I'll go ahead and cleco that to hold it in place. Now that we've put the clecos through from the back side and put some backup washers on the clecos for added support on both sides, we're ready to adjust this cowl piece up level. So what we've done is we've put some pieces from the body installation jig kit roof mounts in and we've adjusted it up and what we'll do here is we'll bring this up until we line the flat area here behind the opening up with the bottom side of the template. We'll lock this up and then we're ready to move forward and trim our fenders and drill them into the doors. The next step in our mounting process is to mount the back of the right fender to the cowl piece. To do that, we're going to bring the fender up to the bottom of the cowl piece. We're going to line up the recess on the cowl piece with the hood recess on the fender. And we're going to make a mark that lines up with where the flange is on the very front of the cowl piece. We'll make a mark here on the inside and one right here towards the center of the car. Then we're going to remove this fender from the nose. We're going to draw a line between our marks as well as along this entire flange area. And on the back side we're going to remove this flange on the back of the fender so we can slide that underneath the A pillar for fitting in the next step. What we'll do at this point is go ahead and either with snips or your air saw we're going to remove the material as we mark it out. Once we've trimmed that out we like to take our Sureform shaver that we used earlier We'll just clean off the excess material where we trimmed it with the saw. As you can see by using this, we can make a nice uniform thickness of this area to lay into the recess on the cowl piece. Then the next step is we'll put the fender back in place with the clecos and we'll lay it in onto the cowl piece. Once we've trimmed and notched out this fender at the hood ledge, we're going to put this back in place and we can see how it lays right into the recess on the cowl piece after we've notched it. Now I've marked it in a quarter of an inch and I put a couple marks on it. I'm going to drill an eighth inch hole at this time through the cowl piece. The reason I used a quarter inch in from the seam at this time is because I'm going to incorporate these clecos into holding the fender brace in a later step. Next thing we want to do once we've drilled those and clecoed them in place is we're going to look on the fender which is running underneath the A-pillar pad. We're going to make a mark right even with the raised area on the A-pillar pad. Then we're going to go to the other side and along the entire front edge of the door we're going to make a mark on the fender. I also want to make a line that lines straight up with the door edge. I'm just going to make a small mark right here. Then we'll remove the fender and get, finish marking it and trim it. As we can see from our line at the front of the door and our mark that we made up here on top on the inside of the A-pillar pad, 
We need to draw a line between these two. Then, I can lay it on this line that we made even with the door edge. And I'm just going to make a small reference mark here. I'm going to come in approximately an inch on an angle here so I don't catch the Clico that's holding the A-pillar in the door. I'm going to angle in. Then along this entire edge, we're going to go one inch behind the mark of the leading edge of the door. Once we've marked that out, we can see where we're going to trim that. Make sure to trim on the rear line, the one that leaves us an inch to go underneath the door. You don't want to make the mistake of trimming on the front line, which is the leading edge of the door, or your fender will be too short. Once we have that trimmed out, we'll just clean up the edges again, like we have on the plastic in the past. And we'll reinstall the fender back onto the car. Now we've put the fender back on, installed it, put the Clecos back in at the, at the back onto the cowl piece as well as into the fender. Now that we know that we have this clamped in, what we've done is put a, a clamp on the door here at the roll to make sure we have a nice tight fit. We can see that by trimming and making the line, it fits nice and tight to the pad here on the A-pillar. And so, seeing that we have a nice fit all along here, we're ready to go ahead and drill and cleco this fender into place. Now that we've completed these steps on the right side of the car, we're going to go over to the left side and show you that there's just a little different process to fit the cowl piece at the back of the fender. First thing we want to do is hold the fender up as tight as we can underneath the cowl piece. At this time it's going to be probably about an inch away. We want to look at the raised areas indicated by the mark here on the cowl piece. And we want to line up the ledge for the hood on the fender with that point. Project a line and figure out where that's going to be. Then what we're going to do is make a line on the fender where the flange goes down on the front of the cowl piece. On the raised area right next to the hood ledge. Then moving back to the A-pillar, I'm just going to eyeball down from the flange and the front of the door and I'll just make a dot at what looks to be the corner. And then the next thing I want to mark is the back side of the cowl piece, the flange that goes down onto the top of the fender. The next thing I want to do with the fender still up in place is I want to look and measure on the approximately the same angle that this hood ledge is on the fender, and measure from the front where we trimmed out on the flange down back to the raised area on the corner. And I'm going to drop the fender down and measure back this distance. And I'm going to make a mark that will be used later on in the fitting process. At this time, we're going to remove the fender. We're going to go to the back, we're going to measure forward a quarter inch on the mark we made at the back flange of the dash area. We're going to draw that line out about to where the dot is that we had in that intersection of the A pillar and the door and then we'll just turn it out. Also we're going to make a mark right down in this ledge, the corner of the ledge, all the way forward to the front mark where the front of the flange was. And we'll angle this out slightly. At this point we're ready to go ahead and trim this area out. At this time I'm not going to concern myself with cleaning up these edges other than just brushing off the loose plastic. We're going to put the fender back in place. Again, we'll go underneath the cowl panel. We'll put a couple Clecos in in front to hold it where it belongs. And now we're ready to make some final marks on this piece. What we're going to do, we'll take our clamp once again. And we'll just kind of 
lightly clamp this up in place. Again, we want to project the line from the hood recess to this corner. I'm just going to put a clamp there for the time being. Now that we have everything up in place a little bit better, we want to make a final mark here. Again, we'll measure back. and We know that we're going to go from that mark we just made because it's up in place now. We'll go back that distance when we take this out. We also need to mark carefully this corner of the A-pillar post pad as well as the front of the door. This, we'll use this mark for a reference to draw a straight line across and figure out the intersection so we can trim this out to fit in this recess provided on the cowl piece. Once again, we'll remove the fender. And we're going to go ahead and mark this out for our final trimming. I'm going to come back the distance that I measured following this angle. I'm now going to measure in from this corner that we used for a location that we marked out on the fender. I'm going to take this dimension and I'm going to measure in following that same line as the front of the door. I'm going to get a mark in the corner here. And I'll use that last mark that I made after we got it fit up in there. I'll draw a straight line. And that'll be our final trim line for that section. We'll go ahead at this time and trim that out. And we'll clean this edge up as we have in the past so we can get a nice clean line to lay down on the top of the cowl piece. And we'll put the fender back in place, this time on top of the cowl piece. We'll click it back into the nose. And then I'd like to clamp this up into the corner, pull it nice and tight on the door. As you can see, it lays in the recess on the cowl piece real nice. And we may have to do just a little final trimming on this angle. If we we're off just a little bit, we may have to shave just a little off to make it fit down nice and tight. Although this one fits in there pretty good. Once we're happy with that fit, we'll again, like on the other side, draw a line at the front of the door. If we have to make any slight adjustment, we'll make a mark up here. We'll draw that out. Then we'll go ahead, take this apart, add the inch to the back like we did on the right side of the car, and follow the same procedure. Leave an inch behind there, trim that off, make sure we do it on the back line, not the front line. Then we'll go ahead and put this back together. And when we come back, we'll drill the top of the fender into the cowl piece. Now that we have the left fender back in place, it's clicked on at the nose. And it's in place here on top of the cowl piece. You can see that it lays into the cowl piece in the recess real nice. Again, I've come in a quarter inch and made a mark for a place to drill this and put a couple eighth inch clicos through the cowl piece. Again, the reason that we come in this quarter inch is later on we're going to incorporate that into the fit of the fender brace. Once we've done that, we can see that we have the back of the fender laying real nice into the A-pillar pad now. Everything is fitting nice along here. We're ready to go ahead and start drilling the, the, through the door into the plastic fender. Now that we've shown you how to attach the fenders to the door, as well as lay them into the recess on the cowl piece, the next step that we want to go forward and do is fit the fender braces. All through this process, we've shown the installation of the plastic fenders, but the process will be exactly the same for fitting the fiberglass fenders. The next step we're going to show you is mounting the fender brace. We have this form fender brace that's available from Five Star. I'm going to put this in 
And because we're using a plastic fender, there's a rib underneath here, a support rib. And we're gonna butt it right up tight against there. And we're gonna come down on top of the chassis here. We're gonna make sure we leave ourselves a little bit of room for the coilover so we don't have any interference there. Then as you can see, we have the fender template on. That's an ABC approved fender template. And on an, a five star body, it lines up with the hood ledge on the front of the fender. And at the back of the fender, it will be aimed at the intersection of where the windshield and the A-pillar intersect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure that I hold this up so it fits tight up to the template. Then I'll go over onto the chassis. I'm going to mark both sides of the brace as well as where it makes contact. And I'll also come up on top of the brace itself and I'll make a mark that lines up with that. Once we've removed the fender brace out of the way, we're going to transfer this mark over to the center. Find a center point here. We like to use a quarter inch flange nut, so what we're going to do at this time is we're going to drill a hole. We'll start here with the 3 16 Then we're going to have to ream that hole out big enough until it accepts the flange nut. As you'll see, when that fits in there, it's on an angle, so that way the top of the bolt will be on the same angle as the top of the brace where it angles up. Once we have that hole drilled to the proper size, we'll go ahead and we'll weld the nut in there, into the chassis. Now that we have that flange nut welded into the chassis, we're going to take our brace over where we marked it previously. We'll drill a quarter inch hole for the bolt mounting bolt to go through. And then once the hole is drilled, we're going to make a mark about an eighth inch beyond the hole and we'll cut off the excess. Now that we've drilled our hole in the end of the brace and cut it off the excess material that's an eighth inch beyond the hole, one other step we like to do is take a piece of the 3 8 inch tubing provided in the body installation tubing kit and cut it off to the proper length to fit inside this tube. The reason we like to put this piece of tubing in the end of this brace is so this won't crush when we bolt it to the chassis. Now we'll go ahead and we'll put the brace in place into the nut that we welded into the chassis and we'll snug it up at this time. Then we want to put our fender template back on the car, line it up properly, again so it's make, intersecting with the hood recess at the front and lining up with the intersection of the, where the windshield will be and the A-pillar. You can see we have a nice fit along here. So the next thing we want to do is see if our brace for our fender lines up, which it does. It comes right underneath this hole that we put in when we mounted the fender to the cowl piece. So at this time, holding everything together here, I'm going to go ahead and drill an eighth inch hole into the body brace. As you can see now, we have this all tied together and we have a nice fit here. So we're going to go on from this part of this fender brace installation. We'll go on to the final part, which will be bracing down to the chassis. The final part of putting the fender brace in is we're going to take a gusset, drill a 3 16 hole in it. And we're going to weld that on the chassis for a mounting point for our support tube. We'll go ahead and we'll measure Get a length, we'll go a little bit beyond the hole, leave ourselves a little extra room, and measure up to the fender brace. Then using the half inch round tubing provided in the body installation tubing kit, we'll cut that to length, and then we'll flatten approximately one inch on the end of that tube. I'm going to take it down and put it in place. Immediately we can see we have to put a little bit of a bend on the flat portion of the tube. So we'll take our vice grip clamp, we'll put a little bend here. Now we can see that we have it fitting flat up against the back of the gusset. And when we have it up to the fender brace now, we can see that we have to put a little bit of an angle on the top of the tubing. So as you can see here, we've ground a little bit of an angle, so it will fit up flush to the fender brace when it gets put in place. Once we have that accomplished, 
go in here with our clamp. Once we have it fitting nice where we, want, we know we have a nice fit onto the fender brace itself, we'll go ahead and we'll tack in the top of that tube to the fender brace. Once we have that tacked on there, the final step is going to be is we're going to put the template back in place on the fender, line it up properly, make sure that we have a nice tight fit. We'll make any adjustment that's necessary here by loosening the clamp, going up and down. Then once we have the proper fit all along the template, we're going to, the last thing we're going to do is go in here and drill into our brace, our upright that we just made. Once we have that hole drilled, we'll put a cleco in place to remove our clamp. And at a later time when we strip the fender off, we can finish our weld to our brace. But you can see that we have a nice strong support for our fender that we know will keep the fender up, fitting the template, and meeting the requirements of the ABC rules. We'll follow the same procedure on the right side of the car, making, putting the fender brace in and making the support in the rear. To assure that we have the proper template fit on the front of the fender at the intersection of the nose, we've lined up our template with the hood recess, as we said earlier, and the A-post. And when we look forward, we'll see that it's right on the mark that we made 26 and a half inches from the center line as recommended in the ABC rule book. Now that we know that the template is fit properly on here, we can see that we have just a little gap to help assist in the adjustment of that gap at the front. We're going to take a gusset, a standard gusset, and bend it about 45 degrees, as well as drill a quarter inch hole in it. Then with one of our universal body braces, you can see that I've attached the gusset on the bottom, bolted it on. I'm going to hold it up here to the hood pin bracket near to the gusset that's welded on for the hood pin nut. I'm going to make a mark here. Then I'm going to take a quarter inch drill bit. I'm going to drill right through the hood pin bracket. Once we've got that hole drilled through the hood pin bracket, we're going to put a bolt through there. Put a nut on the back side. I'm going to bring this brace over. So we have it just sitting nicely on top of the inch and a half square tube that goes out to the front bumper. Once we've accomplished that, I'm going to tack weld that on there to the bumper stick. And as you can see, once we've done that, now we'll have a nice adjustable brace that we can raise or lower the hood pin bracket to complete a nice fit of our fender all along this area. Once we get that adjusted up to where it fits the template properly, we'll jam up the nuts and then we're ready to move on. The next thing I want to show is how we use the adjustable door support to support the right side door on the car. What we're going to do is we're going to take this support in, we're going to lay it on top of the right door bar. In the back, I like to come back and cover the area of the recessed flange on the quarter panel. We'll go up against the door and at this time we'll make a mark on one side of the slot. Here I'm going on the back side of each slot to give myself a reference mark. What we're going to do is we're going to take this out of there to then remove the door and drill holes and put flange nuts in there so we can bolt this in and make it adjustable. Once we have all these holes drilled out to the size that we know that will accept the flange nut, take our right side door adjustable support. And we're going to put the bolts and the nuts on here. The reason we're going to do this is we want to make sure that we get the proper spacing. So we'll go ahead and put all three of these on. After we put the bolts with the nuts on the back side through the adjustable door support, we're going to put it through the oversized holes that we drilled into the door bar. Then we're going to put a level on here just to make sure that we keep this flat. And at this time to assure that we have proper alignment for the slots with the nuts, we're just going to go through the slot and just put a tack weld on each one of the nuts.
Once we've tacked all three nuts, we'll remove the bolts, remove the door support out of the way, and finish welding around the nuts. Then we'll put the door support back on, bolt it back onto the door bar, and at this time we're going to take a measurement at the jack post to the center, approximate center of the mounting flange. Here it looks like we're going to be at about 13 and 5 eighths. We're going to make a note of that here. And we're going to do the same thing back here by the quarter panel leg. And this one looks like it'll be about 14 and 3 eighths. So we're just going to make a note of that so we know what that, where that is when we come back to drilling through the door into the door support. Once we've got that done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take time to put the door back on, install the door back on the car in place. Now we want to show the final steps to mounting the door support on the right side of the car. To make sure that we have the door support mounted properly in and out, we're going to take a straight edge at the bottom of the door forward to the contact patch of the right front tire. We want to angle back at a nice constant angle and show that we're just slightly outside of the sidewall on the right rear. Once we know that we have that adjusted in and out and that will work, we want to also check with a framing square. We want to make sure that we're perpendicular to the ground, approximately 14 to 15 inches up from the ground, so that this area is flat as per the ABC rule. After we have those adjustments made, the final thing we want to do before we drill the door into the door support is we want to check our side-to-side -side template to make sure that we have it at the right angle, positioned properly on the top of the quarter panel, and that we fit all along here a nice tight fit within spec. After we have that portion done, we're going to go back down to the side of the car. Using the dimension that we took when we measured previously, we're going to measure up from the ground and see that within, well within the tolerance that we had for the downward flange on the door support, we'll be able to use the hole that we previously drilled here. So at this time, we're going to drill right through there and into the door support. Once we have that Clicoed in place, we know that it's going to hold from sagging down on the right side of the car, and that way we know that we'll have a nice tight fit on our template, and when we go to tech, we won't have any problems. Then we'll go forward, measuring up at the jack post where we measured previously, and using the dimension that we had, we're going to make a mark on the door, and then we're going to go ahead and drill into the door support here also. Once we have those drilled in and we have that door support holding up the side of the car, we can remove our 7-inch blocks. The next step we're going to do is build a door support for the left side door. Using the 3 quarter inch square provided in the body installation tubing kit, we're going to cut a piece that's going to be approximately 26 inches long. Then we're going to place that under the door, making sure that we come back far enough to catch the last hole at the top of the door. So I'll put that underneath there. I can see that that's back far enough. And then I'm going to go ahead and clamp this tube in. Keeping it flush with the inside of the door. Put another clamp at the rear. And I'm going to measure back approximately an inch from the front of the tube. I'll make a mark. I'm going to divide this area up. Make marks where I'm going to locate some rivets into this bar. Come in about three eighths of an inch on these. So we're in the center of our three quarter inch square tubing. Then we'll go ahead and drill that in. And I'll remove my clamps. Then the next thing I want to do is take a measurement at the front and the rear from the top door bar. And using those dimensions and a piece of the half inch round that's provided in the body installation tubing kit, we're going to cut two uprights to go to this bar to support the top of the door. 
Now that we have our half inch tubes cut, we have them in place, the last thing that we need to do before we go ahead and weld those is check our template fit. So we're going to go up and check the fit of the template. The fit is good. So then we're going to go ahead and tack the door support in place. Once we have those tacked in place, we'll just check our template one more time and then we know that we have both sides of the car supported so that we should have no problem going through tech using the side-to-side -side template. The last thing we're going to do before we can remove the seven inch blocks from the door on the left hand side of the car is we're going to drill a hole. On this particular chassis they have a, a door plate down here so we can drill right down low here into the plate Put a Clico in there, and now we know that everything is going to be held from coming down lower than we want it. Everything meets the specs. The next step we're going to do is install the rocker panel. First thing we'll do is find the center of the jack post, and we're going to make a mark using the framing square from the floor on the side of the door. That way we can locate that once we get the rocker up there. Then, knowing that the Minimum height of the rocker is four inches. We're going to put some locating blocks underneath here. Line up the front edge with the wheel opening on the fender and clamp it, as well as do the same thing on the rear. Then what we're going to do is we'll come to the back and we'll make a mark at the wheel opening where we'll trim the excess off the quarter panel. And then using the framing square, We'll make a mark on the rocker panel to find the center of the opening for the jack post. When we remove this, one thing we're going to do before we go any further, is we're going to measure the jack post from the ground. We're going to see that on this car it's four and a half inches. And we had this, this at four inches off the ground. So to leave an inch of the jack post exposed, we're going to measure up an inch and a half from the bottom of here and make a mark. Then we'll take this over, we'll trim off, we'll make a straight line with the square, we'll trim off the excess, we'll measure in a half inch from each end and put a hole in the center of this mounting area, and then we'll evenly space holes all the way across. Then the last thing we'll do while we have it over at the bench is we'll make our marks and we'll figure out the width that we need for our jack post, usually somewhere around nine inches. We'll measure up, make a straight line across, and mark it out and trim out for the jack post. Then we'll bring it back to the car. After we've trimmed the excess off, made the notch for the jack post, and pre-drilled some holes in the rocker panel, we're ready to bring it back to the car and clamp it in place. We have it lined up with our wheel openings, front and rear. We're ready to drill it in place on the car. Once we have this drilled in and clicoed in, we know that we're done. We can remove our spacer blocks. We can go to the other side of the car and repeat this process on the left side. Now we're ready to show the installation of the rear window. Before we can begin the installation of the rear window, we have to check one time and make sure that our side-to-side -side template fits properly. We can see that our permanent mounting braces are in place on both sides and in the center, which bring it up to the template. But for the fitting of the rear window, we like to also take the pieces from the body installation jig kit and bring them up about approximately centered between the permanent mounts to make sure that when we're fitting the window, we don't push down and, and come away from the template. Once we're satisfied with that fit, we're going to show you how to fit the oversized rear window. We're going to bring the window up into place, knowing that we have approximately a two inch overage all the way around the window. Once we know that we have about two inches all around, top, bottom, and both sides, we're going to take a clamp and clamp into the excess area onto the C-pillar. Then we're going to take our Sharpie, and as we can see, we have two inches here 
approximately two inches on the side and on the top, but in these corners we have a little excess. So we're just going to kind of go about two inches around here and make a line to get rid of some of that excess material. At the same time, we're going to go about one inch in from the mounting flange and make a line all the way around the perimeter of the window. The purpose of this line will be to remove the excess plastic so we can do a real nice fit on the rear window. Once we have that done, we're going to take the clamps off and we're going to take this rear window over to our table. You'll notice that on our table we have a nice clean piece of cardboard with no debris so we don't damage our window in any way. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off these corners that we marked. As you can see, for the trimming, I've used an electric shear. You may not have an electric shear, but in that case, you could use a saber saw with a wood blade, approximately seven teeth per inch, and make sure that you put some masking tape on the pad to protect the window from being damaged. Once we've done that, the next thing we have to do is remove some of this plastic around the edge. First thing I'll do is go around the outer perimeter, just riding right along the edge of the window. Once we've done that, we're going to flip the window over so we can see the line that we made with the Sharpie on the other side. We'll then lift up the, the edge of the plastic where we trimmed it off. And looking through the other side, we'll make a cut where we made the mark with the Sharpie. You want to be real careful while you're doing this not to slip with the razor blade and damage the window. It's always a good, good thing to keep in mind is just take your time and be careful with the cost of the, the windows. You want to take your time so you don't damage them before you even get them installed in the car. Then we'll flip the window back over after we've pushed the plastic, protective plastic film down. And we'll trim it off on the other side to the line we made with the Sharpie. Again, we'll push down the edge, and once we've done that, we're ready to take the window back over to the car. We're going to carefully put it in place. As you can see, we can overlap up here to the two inches because we've removed the Clecos that were used in installing the quarter panels to the roof mount and put rivets in the place. Then we'll carefully clamp onto the C-pillar, making sure that we're not clamping on the area that will be part of the window once we trim it down. Once we have that clamped in place, we're going to use some three-quarter inch masking tape. and We're going to put a line on here where I can see where the ledge edge is. Take my time and get a nice line along here. Again, I'm lining up the bottom edge of the tape with the ledge that I can see through the window. At this time, we're only going to tape the bottom edge of the window. Once we have that taped off, we're going to remove the window and take it back over to our bench and we'll trim and bevel the bottom edge. Again, as I stated, I lined up the bottom edge of the tape with the edge of the ledge, so I'm going to cut to the outside of the tape. Once we've trimmed that with the shear, I'm just going to take and touch this edge up with the belt sander just a little bit. just to smooth out any imperfections that I, or waves that I have in this part. As is pretty much the case any time that you're trimming anything, 
you're better off to stay just slightly away from the line of the tape when you're trimming with the shear and then with the belt sander you can sand up to the edge of it and you'll have a nice constant line. Next thing we'll do is we're going to remove this tape. And at this time we're going to go ahead and we're going to bevel this edge. We like to bevel this edge at approximately a 45 degree angle to make up for the little bit of angle that's in the fiberglass leg. As you've noticed, I've been very careful when using this disc grinder that I'm using so I don't run up over the top of the surface or slip underneath and um, damage the surface. Once I've done this, um, the problem that we have when we're done with this is our grinder marks are going 90 degrees to the edge. And we really don't want that because that can be, give, be the beginning of fractures. So the last thing I'll do right here now is I'll come back with my belt sander and just make the direction go, the, make it go the same direction as the edge. While I'm doing this, all I'm really doing is removing enough material to get any marks that are going on this angle out and we'll have everything going along with the edge. Once we're satisfied with the way that we have that, we'll remove any dust and material that we have off of here. Now we're going to place it in the car. We're going to put this ledge back in here. We can see that it lines up pretty nice. We can go ahead and put our clamps back up on the side. The next thing we're going to do after we have it clamped in place is we're going to mark out the bottom of the window and then we're going to drill it in. I'm going to make my marks on the filler panel. That way when I don't have any marks on the surface of my window. And we'll go ahead and we'll make some marks. We'll kind of evenly space them out. We'll go ahead and we'll mark these out and then we'll come back and drill the window in. Now that we have the marks on here evenly spaced where we want to drill, one thing we have to do before we can actually drill the window is go in here and make a line so we're we're a constant, steady height up from the flange. So we'll just take the clamp loose here. And I'll just come in here. I'm just going to make a line so I have a steady height. And we'll put our window back in. As you can see, what I've done with my line is I've come down slightly lower than halfway up the flange. It seems for the windows when you put the screws in to keep it from getting so many waves if you keep that down just a little bit more towards the edge of the ledge. So at this time we'll go ahead and start drilling these in and clicking them in place. The next thing we're going to do once we have the bottom drilled in and clicked in place and everything fit good down at the bottom, is we're going to take our masking tape and we're going to go ahead and go around the perimeter of the, the window. I'm going to start up here in the center and work my way around. What I want to do again now is I'm going to line up the top side with the flange for the window. Work my way around. I'm very careful not to put too much pressure down here as I'm coming across here because I don't want to make it so it doesn't fit the template properly. Work my way around. Again, I'm just taking a little bit of time here, and I really don't want to cut it too short. I'm going to tape this side off. Once I have that taped off where it'll blend in with the bottom ledge, I'm going to go around to the other side of the car and repeat the same process. 
Now that I have that all taped off around the rest of the perimeter of the window, again remembering that I've taped to the inside of the ledge so all cutting will be done around the outside of the tape. We'll take the window out, we'll take it over to the table, we'll trim it with the shears and bevel the edge as we did on the bottom. When we get done with that part of it, we're going to bring it back in over here and reinstall it in the car to make sure that we have the proper fit all the way around the window. As you can see, we've reinstalled the window, uh, clicking it into the deck lid filler panel as we had it previously. But you can see now that we've trimmed off the outer perimeter and we've beveled the edge so it'll fit down into the window ledge along the C-pillars and across the top of the roof. We'll take a close look and make sure that it fits down properly. If there were any areas that were riding up a little bit, we'd just go ahead and mark where it starts and where it finishes. Leave ourselves a little note here, minus 1 16th if that'd be the case. Then we would take it out, back over to the table, belt sand it flat, then bevel it, um, taking that sixteenth of an inch off. Then we'll bring it off, back over to the car, reinstall it, and once we're happy with the fit all the way around the entire outer edge, across the roof and down the C-pillars, we'll use the same procedure that we did on the deck lid to evenly mark it out and make our mark also in the ledge how high up we want to come. Uh, again, in the C-pillars on both sides and across the top of the roof, then we'll drill and clico the rest of the window into place. This time, I'd like to show you another time-saving feature that Five Star has come up with, and that's something that'll save a great deal of time at no extra charge, and that'll be the cut-to-fit rear window. Now we want to show you the installation of the cut-to-fit rear window. As you can see, as we showed in the step previously on the oversized window, we've cut the protective masking down approximately an inch away from the edge around the entire window, both front and rear. Now what we'll do is we'll go over to our bench and we'll bevel this edge as we did previously on the oversized window at about a 45 degree angle and sand it properly. Providing that you've worked hard and braced properly and have the side to side template fitting the way it's designed to, the rear window at this point should drop right into place and fit into the ledges all the way around. What we'll do is we'll drill it in across the deck lid filler panel, the same procedure that we used on the oversized window as we were fitting it, and then we'll check all around the rest of the perimeter to make sure it lays in the window ledge nice and flush um, like we, we'd like it to. And at that point, we'll use our marked out evenly spaced marks we put on the ledge and drill this. And one thing I want to stress is that I think that you should put Clico in, Clico's in place as you go around here so that we don't get the rear window shifted in the opening and have a problem fitting at the end. Once we have that drilled in all the way around, the next step we want to take is we want to install the rear window braces. In the rear window braces, you'll see that there's a hole provided on one end, a 3 16ths hole. The end that has the hole in it will be at the top. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make some marks here. And what we like to do is go seven inches off the center line. So I'm going to go seven inches to each side. And I'll make a mark. And, it, and then we're going to go down to the bottom. And working over from our center line, we're going to follow the same procedure. And we'll go seven inches to each side and we'll make a mark where we're going to drill our 3 16 hole. Then we'll go ahead and drill those holes. And then we'll go ahead and put the braces in. Okay. As you can see, a 3 16 click will hold the brace up inside there. And then what I'm going to do is come around behind the car and we'll bring the, the braces up, line them up with the hole that we drilled that was seven inches off the center line. And just kind of give them a visual, make sure they look nice and straight. And then we'll go ahead and drill through them. We'll repeat the same procedure on the other side, on the window brace. And once we have those in there, then the next thing we'll do is check with the temp center line template to make sure we have the rear window and the whole back of the car fitting the template properly. Now that we have the rear window braces in place, we want to put our center line template on and check and make sure that we have a good fit from the tail of the car all the way to the front of the roof. We can see that that fits well, so we're going to remove that template and then we're going to move on to how we're going to fasten 
the polycarbonate window into the car. One thing that we recommend at Five Star is using the window screw kit, which consists of these flathead screws. The reason that we want to use these screws is that rivets can apply too much pressure and cause stress fracturing around the holes. So what we want to do so that the, the top of the screw will fit in nice and flush with the window is we want to use the countersink bit, which is available from Five Star. We want to just countersink this down. We'll take our time. We want to take it down until we have a nice flush fit at the top of the screw with the rear window. Might take a couple of tries to get it right where we want it. But ultimately, we want to have it fit flush with the polycarbonate window. Once we have a nice flush fit, we can go ahead and follow that same procedure on all the rest of the holes that we've drilled into the fiberglass panels. Um, a time-saving feature that you may want to use and, and work, seems to work very well is if you take your window, once you have all these holes drilled and clicked in place, put the countersink bit in your drill press. With a wood block and the vise on the drill press, you can preset the stop so that it's the proper depth so that the screw will be flush. At that point, you can go around and, and do all the holes in the entire window and it will save test fitting the screw to make sure that you don't go too deep. Another thing that I'd like to recommend is not over tightening the nuts on the screws. You only have to snug them up. Over tightening can also cause fracturing. The last thing I'd like to mention at this point about the rear window installation is if you paint your panels off the car, after you black out your window and paint your panels, before you assemble the deck lid filler into the car, it's a lot easier to take the rear window and the deck lid filler panel over onto the table and put the attaching screws into the flange and snug them up as well as the screws that are provided in the kit with the window braces to put those in. Attach those all in over on the table and then bring, in, bring the, the window and deck lid filler in and put them into the car and assemble it together in that manner. It would be a lot easier than trying to reach all the way across underneath here to get the nuts started and make your job much easier. Now we want to install the quarter panel window. As you can see, we have a flat, cut to fit quarter panel window. We've cut back the protective coating as we did on the rear window for the installation. And now we'll take and bevel the edge so it'll fit into the recess properly. Once we have the edge beveled all the way around and we have it sanded properly to prevent fracturing, we're going to take and we're going to start down in the bottom corner here. Get it fit down nice into the corner. We're going to go ahead and throw it in. Once we check the fit along the V pillar here and we know that it fits all the way around the way we want it to, we'll go ahead and we'll drill this in and click it in as we did in this, the previous step on the rear window. Another thing that I'd like to show you at this time is the molded quarter panel window. This window comes cut to fit and has a pre-beveled edge so it will fit right in to the recess provided for the quarter panel window. Again this window will fit right in. We'll drill it in. You can see it fits in nice all the way around. We'll go ahead and drill those holes in. And one of the benefits to the molded quarter panel window is the contour of the formed window fits the template much tighter spec. The quarter panel windows as well as the rear windows are available in uncoated or mar resistant finish. The benefits to the mar resistant finish are that it's much less susceptible to light scratches as well as the fact that it's got a permanent anti-fog property. Now we're ready to install the windshield. Because we're using the cowl piece, we're able to use the time-saving cut-to-fit windshield. As you can see, we've followed the same procedure as we did on the rear window and the side windows. We've cut back the protective film, and then we're going to go ahead and bevel the edges. 
Along the sides and the top of the, this window, we've beveled at a 45 degree angle as we did on the rear window and on the side windows. But on the bottom edge, we have to go past 45 degrees. So it'll lay onto the cowl piece at the proper angle. What we found is that when you're beveling this edge, the area that you can see of the bevel here is about 5 sixteenths of an inch wide if you're going to get the correct angle. That's a good place to start and we'll check it when we put it in. Then we'll put the windshield in place. We'll line it up with the roof and we can see that it fits real nice along the top. It's already fit and with our angle on there we're ready to go ahead and drill this in. Now we'll go along the whole top of the window, we'll space it out evenly, and we'll drill the top of the window in. Then we'll come back and explain how to attach the bottom of the window to the window bed on the cowl piece. Once we got the top of the window clicked in place, we're going to put our centerline template back on the car, and we're going to hold the, the cowl piece up to make sure that we have the proper fit for the windshield along the template. As we can see, the base of the windshield is tight up to the cowl piece, so at this time we can drill a hole into the cowl piece and we'll click it in place. We'll follow that those steps all along the cowl piece in the window here making sure that the windshield is down nice and tight. We'll make sure that we have it pushed up before we drill it in and we'll drill across the bottom on both sides. After the bottom is clicked in place we're going to go to both sides, drill and click the sides of the windshield in place and at that point the windshield is installed. The final step of the windshield installation process is to install the windshield braces. To do that, we're going to use our center hole that we had to, that we placed on the center of the roof. It's already been drilled when we put our windshield in. We're going to take a straight edge and we're going to line up with that center hole that's been drilled already, eighth inch, and we're going to put a straight edge on here and make sure that we have a nice straight line up and down and we don't have this thing tipped one way or the other and then we'll transfer a mark onto the windshield bed. Then we'll go up on top of the roof here again on the windshield ledge and we're going to measure five inches each way left and right and we're going to make a mark. We're going to do the same thing down on the windshield bed five inches each side of the center line. At this point, we'll take a 3 16 drill bit and first of all we'll go through the center one that was already drilled to an eighth. Then we'll go out left and right and drill 3 16 holes. As well as drilling 3 16 holes down on the windshield bed. The next step we will, we'll, take, we'll pick up a brace and one thing that I want to note now is that because this has to be a universal brace to be used whether you use the cowl piece or a standard dash, uh, for this particular case and being that we're using the cowl piece we're going to remove three inches from the bottom of the brace which is indicated by looking and to see that there is not a hole. As was the case in the rear window brace, the hole is at the top. So we'll remove the three inches off the bottom. Then we can take the brace and we'll line it up, centering it on our hole on the top, as well as making sure that we're centered on the line that we made and drilled the 3 16 hole. And we'll make a mark on each side of it, the brace. Once we've done that, we're going to again measure 5 inches over from each line in both directions. At this point, I'm going to use a 5 16 drill bit and I'm going to drill a hole at each line. I want to be careful to try to end up right at the edge of the windshield bed as indicated by this line here. So I'm going to set my drill bit up on the line 
and I'm going to drill a 5 16 hole through here. Then I'll move over to the other line. Again, I'm going to line my drill bit up with the line that indicates the top of the windshield bed. I'm going to drill another hole. I'm going to do the same thing for all three windshield braces. Once I have the holes drilled, I'm going to take my air body saw that we used previously in the body mounting process, and I'm going to cut out between the lines. Once we cut those out, it may be necessary to take a file and just do a little bit of finished filing. And this filing is going to ensure that the window brace will fit through the slot. As you can see, I'm filing on a little bit of an angle to help it so the windshield brace will fit through the slot. Once the slot is completed and we can slide the windshield brace through the slot, we're going to go ahead and slide it through and line it up. Pretty much get it lined up with the hole, the 316's hole on top. We can even put a Clico through just momentarily and put all, all three windshield braces in place. Once we know that all three of the windshield braces fit through the slot and they're lined up nice and straight and they look parallel to each other, we're going to stop and reinstall the windshield. Now that we've reinstalled the windshield, put all the Clicos in, we took a 316 drill and lined up with the hole that we drilled through the flange for the window brace. We've drilled through the polycarbonate windshield. Then we'll go ahead and we'll click on the top of the three windshield braces in place. And then we're going to go down to the bottom. We're going to line up on our center mark that we made with our straight edge in the beginning of the process. Once we have the center windshield brace lined up where we want it, we're going to go ahead and drill a hole through the polycarbonate and lined up with the hole that we drilled through the windshield base and through the windshield brace. Go ahead and put a Clico into there. And then I'll go to each brace, the left and the right. I'll take my tape measure, just double check my measurement and make sure it's the same at the top and the bottom and then I'll go ahead and drill through each brace. Once I have the bottom of the windshield braces in place with Clicos, I'm going to set my center line template back over one last time to double check and we can see that we have a nice perfect fit to the template all along the windshield area. This completes the installation of the front windshield. The only other thing that I want to mention is for anybody that does not use the cowl piece, the optional cowl piece, we also have an available and oversized windshield. As was the case with the oversized rear window, it'll be oversized about approximately two inches all around. The big difference between the windshield and the rear window is, on the rear window we started at the deck lid filler panel to fit it at the bottom, where on the windshield we're going to run about two inches past the window ledge, overlapping the roof, and then we'll start by fitting the top of the windshield in first, then the sides, and then we'll finish at the bottom. Using the components that are supplied in the deck lid hold-down kit, we're going to show you how to install the deck lid at this time. First of all, you'll notice that we've taken out the Clicos and, and put a couple random eighth-inch rivets into the deck lid bar to hold the bumper cover in place. Then we installed the hood pins that are supplied in the kit on both sides into the nuts that are part of the deck lid bar. Now we're going to take our Sharpie and make a mark, a locating mark, right at the edge of the recess where these two hood pins are at. The next thing you'll notice is that we've left the hood pins slightly above the recess so that we can get a mark so we know where to drill the holes through the deck lid. Then we'll put the deck lid in place, lining up the back of the deck lid with the recess provided in the bumper cover. Once we know that we have that fit where we want it, we can go in here and we can see approximately where our hood pin is going to be. 
about an inch and a quarter in from the mark. This time, we can take a hammer, and at that location, with a couple of slight taps, we can find our marks where the hood pins will be. At this time, we'll drill a half inch hole through at the location where the mark is. Now we'll set the deck lid in place. We'll turn up the hood pins. You can see that hood pin comes through the hole that we drilled. And we can take the scuff plates, put them over the hood pin. We can drill some eighth inch holes to install the scuff plates. We can repeat that process on the other side and then we'll move forward to the leading edge of the deck lid. With the strip that's supplied in the kit, we'll line it up on the left side of the car. And over here on the right side, we can see that we have a little bit of excess length. So we'll draw a line that lines up with the seam on the filler panel as well as the quarter panel. We'll trim that off. And as you can see, we slightly just rounded the corner so we're not catching things on there later on. We've made a mark at 5 eighths, which is half the width of the strip as well as we've pre-punched some holes to hold this down onto the deck lid filler panel. Then we'll put this in place. We're gonna line up the mark that's at 5 8 on the leading edge of the deck lid. And then we'll go ahead and we'll drill and cleco this strip in place. Now that we have this strip completely clecoed in place, you can see that we have a nice removable deck lid that'll work out for either working inside the car or technical inspections. Now we're gonna show you how to install the door vent windows. First of all, as you can see here, I've made a mark at 12 inches back from the intersection of the A pillar and the front of the door. That's the rule for the ABC body, the maximum length of the vent window. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this window, which is oversized, and I'm going to line up the trailing edge, the back edge of it, with my 12 inch mark. I'll line it up here on the outside. I'm going to look through and I'm going to put a mark approximately three quarters of an inch from the edge of the A-pillar all the way down and then down onto the bottom. We'll trim that off before we put it back in. But one step I want to take before I do that is to prevent damage to the vent window when drilling in, I want to now drill where I've come in a quarter inch from the edge of the door as well as the edge of the A-pillar and evenly space some holes for mounting the vent window. So at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and drill these. Once I have those in, and I've trimmed this down where we marked it previously, I'm ready to slide it in behind the door and up behind the A-pillar. Again, I'm gonna line up with my 12-inch mark. And then I'm ready to go ahead and drill it in. Start at the front. And we'll pull it up and we'll clamp it up to the A-pillar. Again, I'm going to go ahead and drill my holes through. Then the final check that I want to make, according to the ABC rule, is that at our 12-inch mark, the window cannot angle back. It has to be 90 degrees to the surface of the door. So when I put my square up there, I see that we're well within the rule and we're done installing the right side vent window. Now we can go around and follow the same procedure to install the vent window on the left side. The next step that we're going to show you is how to mount the spoiler onto the car. First thing I want to do is go over to the center of the bumper cover. I'm going to make two marks on each side of the center line. I'm going to make one and a quarter inch and one and a half inch. I'm going to do that on both sides. Then what we're going to do 
is we're going to take our spoiler base. On our spoiler base, you can see that we've measured the center of the flange height-wise, as well as e evenly spaced out some holes that we've pre-drilled in here. We did the same thing up on the blade where the polycarbonate will mount. Again, we found the center of this area and evenly spaced some holes and pre-drilled them. At this point, I'm going to hold it up on the car, and I'm going to line it up with the mark that we made a half inch from the center line. We'll drill this in. We're going to put a Cleco in each hole as we come along the back. Drill and Cleco one at a time so we can use it. By drilling and Clecoing one at a time, we're going to make sure that we have this flange tied up against the back of the bumper cover. While we're drilling and clamping, we're going to make sure that, number one, it's tight up against the back of the bumper cover, and on the front side, we're going to make sure that it's down tight against the top of the bumper cover. As you can see, now that we've done that and held it in tight and made sure it was down tight, we have a nice flush fit all along this area. The next step is we're going to install the polycarbonate blank. This we're going to line up with the quarter inch mark that we made from the center line. And we're going to go ahead and hold it up against the base and clamp it in place. Put a clamp near the center and one out towards the end. Once we have this clamped in place, we're going to go to the other side and attach the other base and polycarbonate spoiler blade. Once we have the polycarbonate blades clamped in place on the base on both sides, lined up with our marks that we made earlier from the center line, leaving our half inch gap. One thing we need to do is check and make sure that the template will easily fit in between there for tech, as per the ABC rule. Once we know that fits in there, we have one more thing we need to check before we can drill the blades into the base. What we have to do is we have to measure across the back of the spoiler, as it will be done in tech. Going around the back side of the spoiler, from one end to the other, the maximum length allowable is 60 inches. Once we know that we have 60 inches, we have it clamped on here in its proper dimension, as well as the template being able to fit in the center, we can go ahead and drill through the holes that we previously drilled in the base through the polycarbonate. The last thing I want to mention about mounting the polycarbonate blade to the spoiler brace is that I suggest that you use a button head screw rather than a flat head screw or a rivet. Uh, the rivets pull too tight and cause stress fracturing and if you countersink this as we did in the windows with the amount of stress on the spoiler it tends to stress crack. So we like to use a button head screw and when you tighten it up do not over tighten the, screw, the nut on the back of the screw. Next step in mounting the spoiler, uh, we like to use the adjustable body brace. To do so, we're going to measure out here on the blade. We're going to come in approximately an inch and a half and down an inch and a half and make a mark. Then, we're going to look at the body brace and make sure that our adjustable rod ends are approximately halfway the threads into the brace itself. We're going to hold it up here centered on our mark. We're going to drill a hole. We're going to hold the bottom. We're going to make a mark here so we know where to drill a hole through the bumper cover. Now we'll go ahead and we'll drill our quarter inch holes through the polycarbonate blade as well as the bumper cover making sure that we're in a straight line down and then we'll show you how to finish the installation of the adjustable body brace. As you can see, we've installed one of the adjustable body braces. You may do whatever is your preference using four or six across the back of the spoiler, whichever you choose. But the benefit to using the adjustable body brace is, as you can see, by just turning this brace, we can adjust either way we need to go to dial it into the exact degrees we want. Once we do that, the jam nuts provided on the end, we'll just tighten them up jam them up, and we're ready to move on.
Now we're going to show you how to put the insert portion of the cowl piece in place. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to take our straight edge, going across the carburetor stud and the vents, we'll find the center line here and we're going to mark that up here on the cowl piece. And we'll, next thing we'll do is we'll put some two inch tape on the cowl piece. It's lined up flush with the recess for the insert piece to lay down into. And it comes outward from there. This piece is the insert for the cowl piece. As you can see, as indicated by the dark line, which is on top of the scribe line in the part, there's some overage on this part that you need to remove. It'll be all along this edge, as well as in the, on the inside here, as indicated. Once we've removed that excess material, the next thing we'll do is take this piece and put it in place. And as you can see, we've indicated a center line mark at the middle of the opening. Then what we'll do is we'll slide it left to right to line up with the mark that we made on the cowl piece. The reason that we made this piece adjustable to this point is so the your location of the engine left to right, you'll be able to center this opening over the carburetor and your air box will line up without having any angles that we don't want to see. This time we can see that we have quite a bit of overlap onto the tape, so somewhere along in the center of the tape we'll make a mark so we can remove the excess material. This won't be the final trim, but it is something that we have to do so that we can use the tape to get a good line. Now that we've removed some of the excess and we can see the green tape is exposed, again we'll line up our center line. And at this point, we're going to take some two inch tape we're going to line it up on the outer edge here and then onto the insert. As you can see I'm lining it up flush with the tape that's down on the cowl piece. What that's going to do is give us a line here and we'll come inside of there towards the center of the car and put another piece of tape on there to indicate that line. When we remove the two inch tape that we had lined up previously with this, you can see that we now have a line that will line up exactly with the insert opening. We'll repeat that process on the other side, and once we've finished that, you can see that we have a trimmed piece that's going to fit right into the recess inside the tape. Once we've done all that, we want to check and make sure that we're back flush with the dash portion of the cowl piece. We want to measure our opening and make sure that the opening is two and a half inches as per spec for the ABC body rules. Once we've done that, we're going to measure and mark the center of this flange area, which is, I came in five eighths of an inch because this flange underneath is an inch and a quarter. And I've gone forward to the center. This time I'll drill a hole, making sure that I've got this piece held back tight against the, the rear flange. I'm going to drill a hole all the way through here. Once I've drilled and clecoed this in place, as you can see it fits nice and tight here, I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side. And then the next thing I'm going to do is make a uh, brace from this bar up to this corner of the cowl piece on both sides with the universal body bracing kit. Now that we have the universal body braces installed in here on each side of the insert for the cowl piece, we'll put the center line template back over the car and we'll just adjust these up and down, whatever's required to make sure that we have the proper template fit down here near the opening for the cowl piece. Then we'll go ahead and jam these nuts up on the body braces and we'll be ready to move on to the hood installation. To begin the hood installation, the first thing we have to do is fit the front of the hood. As you can see, I've made a center line mark here between the body lines and lined that up on the center. And then we're going to go back and make sure that we have the hood overlapping from the ledge for the hood to lay into on the fender on both sides that we have plenty of coverage. It looks like we've eyeballed this center line and it looks like the hood is on here pretty straight, but one thing that we can see is that we have a little bit of gap right here on the front of the hood to the hood recess along this line. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the hood back out of our way a little bit here. 
I'm going to grab some tape. I'm going to take this tape and I'm going to line it up with the raised area where the edge of the hood recess is on the nose. And for this particular case, I'm using some one inch tape. I'm going to go along this line. I'll do that all the way across the front of the nose. Once we taped the nose, we brought our hood back onto the nose and moved it forward over the tape that we put on the nose to eliminate the gaps that we had. At this time, we'll go ahead and we'll put our tape on here. And as you can see, I'm lining it up with the outside of the tape that was previously put down on the nose. We'll do that and we'll come across here. Again, keeping it lined up with the outer edge. And we'll carry that all the way across. And then we'll come back. I'm going to put another piece of tape on there. We're going to butt it up to the first piece we put overlapping onto the hood. And again, we'll carry that one all the way across. And then we'll remove the first piece. And you can see that we'll have a real nice line to trim to. So it'll lay right into the hood recess on the nose. And we'll take the hood off and we'll take it over to our bench. What we're going to do is we're going to cut right along this edge of the tape. Once we've trimmed it, we'll take our sanding block and we'll sand it up to the tape. Again, as the case as always in any of the processes that we've done, it's good not to cut into the tape, but just leave it just a little bit so you can sand it right to the line. Once we've sanded up to the line all across, we're happy with the sand job we've done up to the tape. We're ready to take it back over to the car and put it back on. We're going to remove the tape now that we put on the hood. And we can see that it fits down into the recess on our nose. Nice tight fit all along the front edge of the hood. The beauty of this procedure to do this with the tape is we don't have to worry about making any bad measurements or making any mistakes to where we screw up the front of the hood. Next thing we're going to do is make some lines on the nose from the hood pins so we can locate them when we put the hood in place without having to crawl underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a combination square part and use the straight edge. I'm going to put the point at the center of the hood pin. I'm going to kind of run along with a hood pin line here, as you can see right here. That indicates the raised area. I'm going to measure this from the center of the pin. I'm going to make a line that runs along the straight edge. And I'm also going to make a note that at this position, it's an inch and three quarters. I'm going to continue. I'm going to do that all the way across all five hood pins. After we've marked all five hood pins out, we're going to put our hood back in place. We're going to get it fitting in the recess properly. Make sure that we have the back where it needs to be. Looks like we're fitting in. Then we'll go up to the mark that we put on from each hood pin. We'll go all along here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure back. I'm lining up my straight edge with the line that I put down on the nose. I'm going to draw this line up onto the hood, as well as I'm going to make a cross mark right here. That'll be where my hood pin is located. Again, I'll go all across in at every hood pin. I'm going to make the same marks. Once we've marked out the location of all the hood pins, we're going to take the hood with our half inch unibit and we'll drill holes, half inch holes right through the hood. Once we've drilled all five of those holes, we'll take time to move the hood out of the way and run the hood pins up, and then we'll come back to show you how to finish fitting the hood. As you can see, we've run the hood pins up so they come through the hood, and we put the hood back on, and you can see we have just a little bit of gap. It doesn't fit quite as good, so it may be necessary for you to just go in here and grab the hood pin and just bend it, the whole unit slightly forward. It bends on the gusset. And then when you put it back on, you can see that your fit all along this area is nice and tight the way it was when we taped it off. Once we've completed that step, we're going to go to the back of the hood. And we're going to make sure that we stay on the protective masking 
on the windshield. We do not want to draw with our Sharpie onto the windshield. So we'll make sure that our protective masking is still on here and protecting our windshield. And we're going to make a mark all along the back side of the hood. Then we'll go ahead and we'll make several lines, maybe every eight inches or so, for reference marks to take some measurements so we can remove some of the excess material off the back of the hood. Then we'll take the hood, slide it forward slightly. And as you can see, we've got our two inch tape down for our overlapping and taping to make it cut the back of the hood so it'll fit into the recess. So what we're going to do at each one of these marks that we made is we're going to take a measurement. We're going to try to stay parallel to the ground here. We're going to measure and we're going to go from the center toward the back side and we'll pick a number and we'll write it down at each one of the lines that we drew on the, the masking on the windshield. We'll go along here and we'll measure all of these. Again, like I said, from the center to the back side so we don't cut too much off. And then we'll put the hood back in place on the hood pins. Once we have it back in place on the hood pins, we're going to go back and at each one of the marks that we have on here and, and with the measurement next to it, we're going to come forward the amount that we've written down at each one of the marks. And we'll just make a hash mark all along here. Once we've transferred those numbers, made marks, we'll take the hood off, take the hood over to the table, and we're going to get rid of some of the excess material off the back of the hood so we can do our final fitting. After we've trimmed the back of the hood off on our rough cut, we're going to put the hood back onto the car, again making sure we're on the hood pins so we're in the same location. As you can see at the back of the hood, the tape is now hanging out. So we have that for a reference. And then following the same procedure as we did on the front of the hood, we're going to line up the edge of the tape that's underneath the hood with the edge of the tape that we're going to put on top of the hood. And then we'll remove the first piece that we overlapped onto the back of the hood. As you can see, once we do this on both sides, we'll have a nice line to trim the, do the final trim for the back of the hood. As you can see, once we've trimmed the back of the hood and done a little bit of finish sanding to smooth out the edge where we trimmed it, it lays right into the recess provided on the cowl piece for the hood to lay into. After we've done that, we're going to move the head hood out of the way. And we're going to take the aluminum angle pieces that were supplied with the cowl piece. We'll take them over, we'll measure them, we'll drill a half inch hole to accept the hood pin, as well as two 3 16 holes for mounting it to the cowl piece insert. Then what I like to do is measure over a minimum of a half inch from the opening. Take my combination square and I'm going to transfer that mark down onto the front side of the cowl piece insert. Then we'll take the piece that has the hole drilled in it, we'll line it up and we're going to line up the side of that with that so we make sure that we allow enough room by being a minimum of a half inch away from the opening for our cold air box. And we'll go ahead and we'll mark where the holes are going to be. And we'll go ahead and drill that. We'll install the hood pin. And we'll come back and we'll uh, put the holes in here following the same procedure that we did on the front for making the holes for the hood pin. And we'll come back and talk about fin the final fit of the hood. Once we have the hood pins through the hood and we have clips installed, one thing we want to do is take and put our centerline template back on the car. Hold it down and make sure that we're within tolerance of the template from front to rear. Once we're satisfied with that, we'll remove the templates out of our way. And we're going to come out to the sides of the hood, which we can see lay on top of the fender with it being supported up to fit the template. We'll follow the same procedure that we used front and rear to tape the edge of the hood, and trim it and sand it so it'll fit into the recess that's provided. As you can see, now we've got the hood laying into the fender as it's supposed to. We're going to show you how to attach the rear corners of the hood. One option is to simply do the same thing as we did just outside the air intake with these brackets that are provided with the cowl piece. We'll drill them, put the pins in, 
and we'll mount them out near the rear corners. The other option we have is to use the hood hinge, the universal hood hinge. To do that, we're going to have to mark the top of the edge of the raised area on the fender. Then we're going to take the hinge and we're going to line it up with the line that we made and make a mark on the inside to represent the thickness of the hinge material. I'll also want to lay it down here and line the back corner up with this point and make a mark at the front on the hood recess area. I like to round that corner just a little bit. I'm going to come in here on the marks that I made that represent the thickness of the aluminum material. I'm going to make a mark. Then we're going to go ahead and remove the excess material that we marked off on the fender. When using this universal hinge on the fiberglass fender, all that's required is what we've shown you to this point. That is, trim out this excess, line this up, and the one thing that we'll do is we'll make sure that we have this lined up with the back corner, and we'll take our eighth inch drill, and we're going to make sure that we're lined up on the inside with, with the plastic, so when it butts up, that's where it stops. I'm going to go ahead and drill through the holes that are provided in the hinge. To complete the installation on the fiberglass fender, at this time all we have to do is take the hinge out, slide it underneath until it butts up, you can put some clecos or rivet through the holes that we've drilled, and that part of the installation is completed for this portion of the hinge. However, on the plastic fender, we have to require that it's done just a little bit differently. So what we like to do is take the holes that are provided in the hinge and drill them out to 3 16 At the same time, we're going to oversize these holes to 3 16 And then what we're going to do, and it'll be a little bit of a struggle, is we're going to go in between the plastic fender and the plastic stiffener that's on the rear, and we're going to sandwich this in between and get our holes lined up. Once we have these holes lined up that we've drilled through here, uh, I just want to mention that the reason that we're using 3 16 rivets is because they're longer and we'll be able to go through the fender, the hinge, as well as the stiffener underneath. We also recommend that you use a backup washer so it pulls that all together and keeps it from coming apart. After we've completed that portion, we're going to take the other half of the hinge we're going to put the pin in place. We're going to line this up with the edge of the hood. And then we're going to take our eighth inch drill bit. We're going to go ahead and drill through the hood. And I'm going to go ahead and drill the rest of the holes. Once I've done that, I'm going to make a mark if it's required to remove any of the hood. It looks like in the front it's pretty well flush, but in the back it looks like we have to remove a little bit. So I'm going to make a line here. I'm going to remove this half of the hinge. And using my straight edge, I'm going to mark out what has to be trimmed off the edge of the hood for the hinge to fit properly. Then we'll go ahead Remove our clip, take our hood up, and we'll trim off what we've marked out. And at that point, once that's trimmed, all we should have to do is put the hinge underneath here, get the holes lined up, and go ahead and rivet this in place. Once that's done, we can put the pin back in, put it all together, and the installation of the hood is completed. We want to show you how to install a cowl induction cold air system. To begin with, we're going to take the lower piece of the air box and put on our aluminum ring, push it on. It's machined to fit. Then we'll put it in here over the carburetor and let it run long. 
behind the front of the cowl piece. And we're gonna hold this down flush on the carburetor. We're gonna measure on both sides and we'll see that this number is five and seven eighths. Once we know what that number is on both sides, we're gonna take the air deflector that's part of the cowl piece. It's one of the components. And we're gonna take and we're gonna take our square. We're gonna hold it on here at five and seven eighths. We'll make some marks. And then we'll go ahead and draw some lines across the back and along the sides. We'll then cut that off to that length because that'll be the proper height from the, the bottom piece up to the cowl opening. Once we've done that and we've cut that height off and we have it at five and seven eighths from the top to bottom, then what we want to do is Make a mark one inch in at the bottom on both sides and we'll connect that with a line. We're gonna remove one inch here and we'll also round this top corner on both sides. The reason we wanna angle this is to help aid with the installation and removal of the air box when we get it all trimmed and fit. The other thing we wanna do at this time is measure the width of the flange on the back of the air opening and we're gonna come down that distance and make a mark on the inside. Then we're gonna take our quarter inch bit, we're gonna line it up with this mark and we're gonna drill through from the inside to the outside. We're gonna do that on both sides and then on the outside we'll take and we'll make a mark from the hole to each side of the opening. We'll then cut this slot out down to each side of the hole with the, the air body saw as well as trim the rest of this piece off. Once we've done that and we have that trimmed to those lines as we had on there in the top corner rounded so it doesn't interfere with the inside of here, we're ready to take this piece and place it up into its proper position. As you can see the slot is so it'll go on either side of the back flange for the air intake opening. You can also see that we've located some holes in the center of the flange on the side. So at this time I'm going to get a drill and we're going to go ahead and drill 3 16 holes through the hole, pilot hole that we have in the insert. For the time being we're just going to clico this air deflector in place on the cowl insert and at a later time we're going to go ahead and put Zeus fasteners in here as well as out here on the outside like we mentioned earlier. After we've done that, we're ready to reinsert the lower portion of the air box. And we're gonna hold it down tight on top of the carburetor and we're gonna make a mark along the front side of the air deflector piece as well as up the side. we'll remove this piece and as you can see we have a line where the front of the deflector is. We're going to measure back an inch and a half both on the bottom as well as on the angle on the sides. And we'll draw new lines and that will be the trim line where we'll cut the back of this excess material off. Once we've done that, we'll reinstall it. And as you can see, we have a nice fit all along here where the deflector piece comes in. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the deflector. We're going to put our air cleaner element in place in the base and then we're going to put our untrimmed top of the air box in place with the hole that we drilled in the center of the recess provided. As you can see it runs along to the back past the insert on the cowl piece. So at this time 
we're going to make a line that's flush with the cowl piece all across the top of this box. Then we'll remove that. We'll reinstall our deflector piece. Then we're going to draw a line back. We're going to come back approximately an inch. And we'll give it a little bit of angle like the lower piece has. We'll draw our line. We'll do that on both sides of this upper part of the air box. And then we'll go ahead and trim that off. Now that we have the deflector piece back in and we have the top of the box trimmed as we marked out previously, we're ready to reinstall this with the air filter element in. We can see that everything fits and lines up nicely and we'll come back and we'll show you what to make for a support for the top of the box across the back at the cowl piece insert. The last step we have to take to complete the cowl induction cold air system installation is we're going to go over and we're going to hold the lid down and we're going to measure down to the top of the air box. We have a dimension on both sides. The next thing we're going to do is make a piece to support across the back of here. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the insert. And we're going to make a piece of aluminum angled piece of aluminum that we can bring in here and attach to this back flange on the cowl insert. What we'll do is we'll space it down properly and as you can see that we've pre-drilled this so that we get the dimension to be the same on both ends as we measured when we measured down to the top of the box. After we've done that, we're going to remove the lid. We're going to put our insert back into the cowl piece and click it back in place. Once we've done that, we can reinstall the lid and we're going to go on top of this piece of aluminum that we made to come forward to support this. And now you can see that we have support for the back of the box so it won't go down as well as a nice seal for the cow induction system. Next thing we want to show you is how to install the bump and run dump. The first thing we want to do is show you how to properly measure your radiator. The dimensions for the different kits of the bump and run duct are based on measuring the core area only on the radiator. So we'll measure side to side from the inside of the tank in the core area to the other side, as well as top to bottom, again measuring only the core area from top to bottom. Those dimensions will tell you when you look it up which kit you need. After that, I'd like to show you the components of the bump and run duct. The first is the bag. One thing I want to note at this time is if you receive your bag and the stitching is on the outside with this lip here, the bag needs to be turned the other way around. When you turn it around, you'll see that the seam is a nice clean seam on the outside. Then I want to talk about the, the aluminum pieces that are supplied. These pieces are for the nose piece. You have the framework as well as the clamping pieces. And then you have the framework that goes onto the radiator as well as the camp clamping pieces. Once we have all those pieces and we have identified them, we can see that each piece has some wording on it. Nose bottom, nose top, and so forth. We'll assemble the nose piece using the four pieces supplied. And we'll also assemble the radiator piece. And again, those all have wording on them so you can get the right piece in the right place. Once we've assembled those, we want to get the clamping pieces that are supplied in the kit, and we want to uh, pre-drill them onto the framework itself. We're going to come about an inch from the back edge, and we'll go ahead and we'll drill four holes in the top piece. We'll flip it over, and we'll do the same thing on the bottom as well as the sides. Later on, we'll have these all pre-drilled when we're installing the bag, and it'll make it much simpler. 
Next thing we're going to do is go over to the car and show you how to install the nose piece onto the nose. As you can see, we've clamped the nose frame into the nose on the flange provided on the plastic nose. Next thing we need to do before we drill it in place is put our center line template back on the car to assure that the template fits properly. Once we, can, once we see that we have a good fit here, we're ready to go ahead and drill the frame onto the nose. Once we have the framework drilled into the plastic nose, we're going to remove it and take it over to the bench and install the bag onto the nose frame. We've come over to the bench and we have the frame for the nose as well as we've slid the airbag over the framework. The reason we're going to do this work on the bench is because it's really tight to work on it inside the car. So we're going to install this now. We're going to, we're going to find the hole. We're going to use a punch to kind of start our hole. Once we have that through there, we want to go ahead and just drill it. Once we have that hole drilled through there, we're going to put our clamping strip on. Then we'll go to the other end, find our hole, and use the same procedure, drilling and clecoing. Once we've done that, we're going to continue. We're going to do the same thing across the top as well as on the sides and the bottom using the pieces that we pre-drilled earlier, the clamping pieces, so everything will line up a little bit easier. Once we've done that, we'll go back over to the car and reinstall this frame with the bag on it onto the nose. Now we're going to install the framework onto the radiator. As you can see in the flange on this particular radiator, there's four holes, two on the top flange and two on the bottom. We're going to use those as well as overlapping the flange on the framework onto those flanges. We'll go ahead and we'll mark them out and then we're going to drill them and cleco the frame onto the radiator. Once we have the four clecos into the framework onto the radiator, we'll take the radiator over to the car and install it. Once we've reinstalled the front nose frame onto the nose, we have the bag here. We've put our radiator in place with the radiator frame installed. Now we're going to put the bottom of the bag, slide it over to the framework, and we're going to start to try to pull it tight. And as we can see, with the excess material on the back, we're going to have to slit it a little bit. So on the bottom, we're going to cut right along the seam just a little bit, and we'll slide it back, and we'll just keep making the slit just a little bit longer until we can pull it nice and tight to the nose piece. Once we've done that, we'll slide the top over, and we're going to roll it forward. You can see there's plenty of excess material and we'll just keep rolling it over and pushing it forward until we get a nice shape here. We have it kind of tight around here. The reason we have all this excess material is to accommodate the different distance from the nose that the radiator may be as well as the slant of the radiator. Some people have them straight up and some people lay them back. So we'll go ahead and we'll get this nice. We have a nice shape coming up to the top. Everything is nice and tight. At that point, we'll go ahead and we'll cut a slit along the stitching on the top on both sides. Once we've done that, we can get this piece up out of our way. We'll get it up pulled nice and tight. Again, we're going to look for our hole that we pre-drilled through, then we'll drill it. And we're going to install the clamping strip. Now we'll use the same procedure as we did when we attached the bag to the frame for the nose. And we'll locate the holes, drill them, and attach the clamping strips. The last thing we'll do after we've completed that is we'll trim off the excess material off the back of the bag. Now we're going to install the grill screen. The grill screens come pre-sized to fit in the recess provided in the nose. They're available in 8th inch or 3 16 inch screen. And as you can see, we've added a support in here with a rivet and a washer to help so the screens won't pull out as easily. 
Now we're going to go ahead and put it into the recess provided on the nose. I want to make a mark so I don't drill a hole here at the seam. Then we'll take it over to the bench. We're going to evenly space out some holes and then we'll bring it, bring it back over here and we'll reinstall it on the car. Now we're ready to remove the excess material from the flap on the nose. We want to make our wheel, complete our wheel opening. So what we did is we took our piece of aluminum or anything if you want to use poster board or whatever you want to use. We laid it down on the table. Then we laid the fender down on top of it and traced out the wheel opening. As you can see, when we turn that around and we line it up with the wheel opening in the fender, they give us a nice line, nice continuation of that line onto the flap of the nose. I'm going to mark that out and then we'll go ahead and trim it off. Once we've trimmed the back flap on the nose and completed our wheel opening, we're ready to go ahead and put our body braces in. There are a couple ways that we offer to do that. One would be using the 3 8 inch round tubing that's supplied in the tubing installation kit. We would make sure that we had the wheel coverage where we want it, flatten one end, attach it with one of the Clecos that goes into the flange, and then we push that out, mark this end, flatten it, and drill it into the bumper. The other option that we offer is the polycarbonate body brace. Kind of following the same procedure, we would hold this up here, check our angle, draw a line, we'll trim the end, we'll fasten one of, one of the aluminum tabs that's provided in the kit. We have tabs that come like this that are made to attach on both ends of the polycarbonate body brace. What we've done is we've pre-punched it. We have two holes in one end and one in the other. As you can see on this body brace, we use the two rivets into the polycarbonate body brace. We'll take that then and go in, attach it with one of the Clecos. We'll mark this end, trim it, and attach the aluminum piece onto the end of the body brace. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to run two in the front, one to the flange of the fender in the nose and one down to the bottom. Now you can see that we have the polycarbonate body braces in place, one to the flange of the nose and the fender, as well as one to the bottom of the nose. And we have our tire coverage where we want it. We've also left plenty of room for the tire clearance so when we turn the wheel we don't hit the body brace. A big benefit to the polycarbonate body brace is that you can take a little bit of a hit in on the fender and it will spring the nose back out and that will avoid rubbing the tire after you've taken a little bit of a hit. After we've supported the nose with body braces, we're going to come behind the wheel opening here on the front wheel and we're going to put a body brace from the fender into the chassis. We're going to line it up about with the contact area of the tire. Then moving back on the side of the car, we're going to take our straight edge and we need to maintain a straight edge here as per the rule. So we'll put another body brace here at the jack post as well as one right in front of the rear wheel. After we've made those and supported those properly, We'll go behind the, the rear wheel and we'll build one body brace that's going to go into the chassis behind the wheel opening. Once we've done that and we have the right side of the car supported properly, we'll go to the left side and build the same body braces down the left side and then we're done with the body bracing for the body. Vinyl Graphics Application We'll now demonstrate some tips and tricks to achieve success with applying vinyl graphics to your completed 5-star body. You should have clean hands and a clean work area as well, since any grease or contaminants may affect the adhesion and appearance of the graphics. Note that the windshield has previously been fit to the body, with mounting holes drilled and edges beveled. We'll begin with the windshield blackout kit, which comes with a detailed instruction sheet that you should read before beginning. You will need a few basic supplies and tools to complete the installation. A plastic squeegee is included in the blackout kit. You'll also need a razor blade or X-Acto knife, a spray bottle of soapy water solution using one quart of water to one teaspoon of dishwashing liquid, preferably Dawn or similar clear product without dyes and perfumes, lint-free towels, window cleaner, a grease pencil, a black permanent marker with a wide tip, a large drill bit for deburring windshield mounting holes, and a small drill bit to puncture the vinyl covering the mounting holes. 
You should have a blanket or similar clean soft surface on which to lay the windshield so as not to scratch it while working. With the outside facing up, measure the areas you'd like to black out and mark the borders with the grease pencil and make a center line mark as well. Now flip the windshield over. Because the blackout will be applied to the inside surface, lining up the marks you made on the outside. Use the large drill bit to deburr all pre-drilled holes so the vinyl will lay flat around them. Peel back the protective film to expose the work areas. Then clean the windshield with window cleaner and a lint-free cloth. Use a wide tip permanent marker to black out the beveled edges of the windshield. Next, apply a light mist of soapy water solution to the windshield, which will allow repositioning during the application process. Carefully remove the backing from the top section of blackout vinyl and apply the soapy solution here as well. Line up the center line of the vinyl to the windshield center line. Align the lower edge of the vinyl to your grease pencil mark and lay the vinyl onto the windshield. With light pressure, gently begin working the water from under the vinyl with the squeegee, working from the center out toward the edges. Gradually increase the firmness of the strokes to continue working out any trapped water and air. If necessary, you may lift and re-wet the vinyl to achieve a smooth, wrinkle-free application. Remove any excess water with a lint-free cloth and continue with the squeegee until all water has been removed. The vinyl should set for 30 minutes, then re-squeegee and trim excess material with a razor. Next, apply the A-pillar vinyl to the sides. You may choose to apply these dry since their small size makes them more manageable. Follow your guide marks and squeegee after applying. Relieve any bubbles by piercing with the razor and pressing to remove trapped air or water. Locate each mounting hole and puncture the vinyl with a small bit so that when the mounting screws are pushed through later, they will not push back the vinyl. Let dry overnight before installing. If you choose to paint your blackout areas, you'll need the five-star window blackout paint, good quality three-quarter inch masking tape, fine line masking tape, and some isopropyl alcohol. Clean the windshield thoroughly with window cleaner and follow with isopropyl alcohol using lint-free cloths. Mask off any areas you do not want painted. Follow your grease pencil marks and use fine line masking tape for a clean edge border. You can carefully trim away the excess window protecting film and seal the edge with masking tape to complete the masking. Following the directions on the window blackout paint can, shake well and apply three light coats, allowing each to set up before applying another. After an overnight dry, carefully remove the fine line tape pulling back against itself to cut a clean edge on the paint and avoid lifting the paint from the surface. Now we'll demonstrate the application of headlight graphics and other body graphics. The body surface must be free of both chemical soluble and water soluble contaminants. Use an automotive wax and grease remover followed by window cleaner using lint free cloths. Next, trim excess backing paper from the graphic. Visually position the graphic where you want it and make some reference marks with the grease pencil. Remove the backing paper, then line up the graphic to your marks and carefully apply the vinyl starting at one end, working across with your palm. Follow with the squeegee to remove any trapped air. When applying graphics to any surface, the hinge method can be very helpful. Visually align the graphic and hold it in place with tape. Then measure to ensure proper alignment. Tape the edge of the graphic to the body to create a hinge. The individual letters are then carefully separated to ease application. Remove the backing paper and apply sections one at a time. 
squeegee firmly, then move to the next section. Finally, remove the overlay and finish smoothing out any air bubbles. Following these guidelines, you can achieve professional results to enhance the appearance of your 5-star body.